Good evening, everyone. Hello, welcome back. Here we go. Welcome back. Welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Evening, everyone. Uh, here we are. Nice, peaceful, Manon. Having just watered a crime boss for the for the secret guild of assassins. Um, here, what's while I spin for a moment and fix something? Yeah, we're back. Sorry about that. Uh, all right, so the rest of today, the rest of tonight, um, I have some various um, Ghetto Herodon stuff. Right, the various Sunry Myrtle or Sunry Murder Trial stuff. Even Phoenix. Welcome back. Uh, the murder trial stuff should be very fun and uh, certainly worthy of discussions. Uh, what we found out so far, uh, if you recall from last time, yeah, last, yeah, this was last week. Um, Jolie's old friend, Jolie here, uh, is an old friend from the war, uh, an old Republic war hero who apparently was having an affair with a Sith, a uh, Sith woman. Um, they also both. Uh, his his friend Sunri and the Sith woman were trying to uh, fish information out of each other, spy versus spy style. Uh, they were both trying to play each other, and they were both also sleeping together, and uh, it was a whole mess. The usual kind of mess that you'll find in a neutral neutral zone of a uh, of a hot war, such as Manon. Um, and so, what we found out so far is that he was in fact at the scene of the crime where she was shot. That she was somehow able to be shot, which does seem weird for him, uh, and that her master, her Sith master, showed up and planted evidence, um, his medal, his war medal, uh, planted that on her person. Uh, so he was there, but he may not have been responsible, and uh, and that he there was evidence planted against him. Uh, so we're gonna. Uh, at least the first half or so of this stream, we're going to be doing a, a few other things around um, around Manon. Finish up that murder trial, see what we can find out, see what we can discuss about this, because it does seem to be an incredibly complicated situation with, with bad actors in general all over the place. Uh, so, let's see, what other things do we need to do here? Okay, yeah, this is all just evidence about the... Um, the Sunry case. Okay. Uh, Shape-shifting alien named Rulan. Hulus has advised you to look for him on Kashyyyk in the Shadowlands. We'll do that next. Um, you know, Haradon Vorn. Vorn Dasrad. Hunting crate dragons on Tatooine. With an assault droid companion. Alright, we'll do that after that. Question for the Republic. Okay, so like now I need to go down to the, the secret Colto mining base, uh, which is, whoo, that was, that's a horrifying violation of a peace treaty, uh, massive environmental degradation that is that seems to be causing serious problems, uh, sending a bunch of mercenaries to their deaths who are never heard from again, also all kinds of kind of nasty stuff that the um, that the Republic is doing. Uh, this one, I'm not going to go ahead and murder a prisoner to make it look like an accident because he's a uh, he's a political dissident. That one I'm not. I'm just not doing. <clears throat> anyway, Phoenix said, Last time on the Philosophy of KOTOR. Z. Oh, Philosophy of KOTOR. Oh. I get it. I thought that said two for a second. I get confused. Last time on the Philosophy of KOTOR Z, spy lovers get framed and Jedi Scooby Gang tries to investigate what happened. Well, let's go Scooby this. I'm not gonna no. I'm not gonna dignify that line. Uh, anyway, was that her own ability to continue to grow? She's actually afraid she may now be a detriment to your development as a Jedi. Right, well, let's bring her, bring her along. Party full of Jedi once again. Okay, so we um. We talk to you about this next. Scoobin' time. 
<laughs> it's my favorite part of the Scooby-Doo movie. And then he scooped all over the place. <laughs> oh, gosh. I... I do want to go back and watch the Scooby-Doo movie. There's the Zombie Island one, I think it was. The live-action one. I remember that thing being way better than its awful Julie, reputation would say. May I have a moment? Ooh. There's something I wish to speak to you about. Something yeah, more about genetic philosophy, I, think, I would think. Time until we had the whole come back to the order discussion. Well, I guess there's no avoiding it now, so let's get it over with. I know you have issues with the order, but you are a Jedi, Jolie. You command the Force. Without the guidance of the Council, how can you avoid falling to the dark side? Well, I've managed to avoid it the last 20 years or so. Besides, light side, dark side, they don't mean the same to me as they do to you. I don't see in absolutes. <laughs> oh my god, I... I, I'm afraid to say number three because I assume that would be sarcastic, but that could just be the dark side option. <clears throat> I'm going to go a little more diplomatic with it, so you don't have a problem with Malak and the Sith? I want to stop Malak as much as anyone, but I don't have to join the Order to do it. Look at Karth or Kandorus. They're with us in this quest, but they aren't Jedi. The capacity for good or evil, like the Force itself, is in all living creatures. And belonging to the Jedi Order, or the Sith, or any group, won't change what you are at your core. I see you are quite adamant. No doubt you've had ample time to think on this during your long seclusion. I guess it was foolish of me to think I could sway your position so easily. Yeah, I'm old and stubborn. But I appreciate the effort. But from now on, you can just think of me as any other non-Jedi in our little group. With a lightsaber. And force powers. Um, I think that that he has a point that identity as a Jedi or even identity as a Sith <clears throat> does not itself define one as good or evil or or force or shape one's personality towards good or evil. That kind of thing. Um, but but uh, Phoenix, I think you're on to exactly, exactly the problem here. <clears throat> um, he says, this is the philosophy moment. He sounds a lot like a prot saying, we don't need the papacy to beat Satan. Well, you don't technically, but, I mean, it helps. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. You, you don't necessarily need to be a Jedi to be good or a Sith to be evil, or vice versa, but... The organizational structures of each of them have significant impacts. Like, you could, in the abstractest of theories in real life, be a good person and a member of the Church of Satan. It's vaguely possible. Maybe you are trying to reform from the inside. Maybe you're trying to, to draw people out of it or something. Something like that. But it is it would be astronomically difficult to stay a good person in an organization that is explicitly evil. Similarly, you can be a bad person and and be Catholic or a member of the hierarchy even to formal in the formal structure. The distinction is that it's it's easier to be good, to maintain virtue when you have this organizational structure surrounding you that is keeping you on the right path or that's guiding you along that path or, or illuminate, excuse me, illuminating the path for you without that without that organizational structure without that without that to lead to guide and to to constrain you uh, you're far more likely to drift aside <clears throat> jolie has the benefit as he said of being old and stubborn he he is set in his ways and those ways are virtuous. They were developed early on as a member of the Jedi. So he has that benefit. Um, if you have well-established virtue, then you can do better on your own. Maybe not perfectly. Still not perfectly, I should say. Um, but you're more likely to... Excuse me. You're more likely to be able to hold... To remain steadfast in virtue 
than, than if you are sort of just learning and trying to learn exclusively on your own. That's obviously doomed to fail. Let's uh, talk to our sketchy contact here. Yeah, I think that that um, now there is something more to say about Jolie and his relationship to the Jedi, but maybe I'll wait until that comes up in a conversation, and it has to do with, with love and relationships and things like that. Uh, love and attachment and commitment and marriage and family and yada yada yada. Um, I might talk about that now after I talk to this guy, um, after I talk to him about assassination and see where that goes. Um, or I might just wait for it to come up in conversation with, with Jolie, because that's kind of his thing. Um, oh, good, good example. That's a really good comparison, Phoenix. Uh, it says it's like trying to fight alcoholism. Being part of a temperance group like Alcoholics Anonymous isn't a guarantee, but it's better than fighting addiction alone. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's, like, metaphysically speaking, there is as strong a pull to the dark side as there is to alcohol for an alcoholic. Like for a Jedi, for one who has this level of power and is immediately in contact with the Force, the temptation to the dark side is is it's like the temptation of addiction, albeit addiction that maybe has been conquered. But you're not in you're not in an ongoing habit of uh, of drinking in, in this case. But once you're an alcoholic, you're an alcoholic. Once you're a force user, you're a force user, and there is a temptation to fall at all times. And if you do, just like if you fall off the wagon, uh, if you're an al as an alcoholic, you're off. You're you're off. You're off to, you know, galactic conquest in the one case, or uh, or destroying your life in others in the other case. Well, destroying your life in other in others in both cases. But you get the idea. Uh, yeah, I think that that's a great example, and it's it's one that. I mean, the analogy isn't perfect, because it's not like... I think the major disanalogy is that the temptation to addiction, to the temptation posed by addiction, is one which was already formed and shaped by one's prior choices to a large degree. I mean, not entirely. There are innate properties about oneself, uh, whether that's psychological or physiological, um, that affects one's propensity to addiction. Uh, but... It is in large part, um, it's in large part dependent upon one's choices. Whereas the temptation to the dark side is the allure of power as such. It's one of the chief temptations. It's pride, really. It's the it's the it's the source of the fall of Satan. It's the source of the fall of man. It is the source of most of our individual sins. And it's the, the source of the world's grandest tyrannies. Because we are tempted to seek power simply for its own sake. Which it's note, note, noteworthy that power is, strictly speaking, a merely extrinsic good. It's not good in its own right. It is only good for what it can get you. Uh, it's not good for its own sake. But we treat it as if it were good for its own sake, to our peril. And that is, I think, the greatest temptation of the dark side that's represented in Star Wars that is a real, a very viscerally real temptation for uh, for us human beings, particularly particularly in positions of power, but not even necessarily. It's all of the vices turned into a magic force. Yes, but prim again, I think I think I think primarily it's pride. Uh, just listen to the Sith Code. The next planet we're going to is Korriban, where we'll talk about that more extensively. Um, but the last line of the Sith Code, there, uh, the, the equivalent of um, there is no death, there, there is only the Force, how the Jedi Code ends. The Sith Code ends, the Force shall uh, the force shall set me free. And it's through grasping power into one's own hands, taking, and then wielding everything. The, the fundamental nature of reality. It is, it is again analogously, uh, it's symbolically speaking, the will to be like God. It's pride. It's Satan's pride. So the fall to the dark side is equivalent to the primal sin. Um, 
This is why I, I uh, if you haven't seen it, you should. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, hold on. I have a video on, on my channel. Um, I think it's called Force Ghosts in the Fall of the Devil. Uh, it looks to the sort of doctrine surrounding Force Ghosts and how the Jedi and the Sith can, or if they can, achieve a kind of immortality. Um, and I make the comparison to uh, a particular bit from St. Anselm's dialogue on the Fall of the Devil. And it really points to the Sith uh, and their acquisitiveness and their pride uh, as being in many ways very similar to um, very similar to uh, to the fall of the devil as, as outlined by the traditional scholastic theologians yes also that is another good example the uh, the Alfie Evans video I'll put that in the description if anybody else hasn't seen it uh, but that that in particular just goes to um, that goes back at least to Plato uh, who's very, very concerned about the pursuit of power for its own sake, about the tyrannical the tyrannical soul, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, the tyranny of the tyranny of unnatural desires, uh, as he puts it. Unnatural in this context, not simply meaning a violation of the natural law, but uh, desires for things that <clears throat> uh, uh, in a strictly unnatural way. Uh, the chief among them is is treating extrinsic goods as intrinsic, so power and money are the, the main ones. Uh, but this can also be uh, be something like willing to do with something, uh, willing to treat something in a way inappropriate to its nature. Um, unnatural desires in this in this sense um, are often sexual, uh, and are paraphilias, fetishes, basically. Um, all of which are the kinds of unnatural desires for the same reason uh, for Plato. And he even I was noting that in this part of the Republic, he even uh, even refers to um, uh, let's say what the pagan culture today and in his time very much celebrated in our culture to be celebrated around this time of the month or this time of the year. Um, even pointed to those those such such actions as these kinds of unnatural desires that um, that can that can be the result of a tyrannical soul. And people think that Plato was a was a uh, was a defender of the arsenicoites. Welcome back, Hainchar. I see that you have come alone. This is good. I assume you are here to discuss the business of the General Herodon. Thorak Goldar is dead. Yes, I heard he met a rather grisly end. For completing his mission, you have earned a rather another reward. Take these General Herodon gloves. You will find they are very useful in battle. By disposing of Ithorak, you bring yourself ever closer to being accepted into the General Herodon. You must complete all your missions before you will be admitted into the guild. Is there anything else, Hainchar? I'll be back later. I'll be waiting for you, Hainchar. The General Herodon are eager to see the extent of your abilities. Okay, cool. Anyway, let's see if we can talk to Sunri. Anyway, like I was saying, I think, um, the main reason I think that people set base I went completely the wrong direction, didn't I? I think the main reason that people uh Oh that's right, we do need to go to the Sith base. We need more evidence. We need to uncover more evidence. We need to go to the Sith base. Let's do that right now. Uh anyway, as I was saying, uh one of the one of the main um one of the main reasons that a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of people tend to think that, um, oh, here we go. So uh, Phoenix says, people think that Plato was an uber fash, 
but he was uh, literally a philosophy wrestler who was grounded in the reality of his time. And honestly, he had... I don't know if I should properly say he had, or... What can I do? Oh my god, come on, guys. Sure. I don't know if it would be right to say that he had, or that Socrates had, and Plato recounted some of. Um, but he had some really fascinating and novel insights uh, into especially ethics that wouldn't really come to prominence until the scholastic period and many of which were were even dropped then uh, they're very very very, very proto-christian points uh, the i mean for one the unnatural the unnaturalness of uh, of um, sodomy broadly speaking uh, that is, uh, that is, we could go here. What else do we need to do here? Uh, the unnaturalness of sodomy is, uh, is one of the, which it was not really considered significantly in, uh, in Athens, at least. Uh, other parts of the world at the time, obviously, sure, but Athens, uh, Athens has this reputation for being very, uh, very, very gay, uh, which is incorrect, but only for, for, for conceptual reasons. In any case, though, um, Plato was fairly fairly opposed to the to that sort of culture at the time, uh, and you can see this in the Symposium. You can see this in the Republic. You can see this in the Mino. Um, see it in the is it the Gorgias? No, no not the Gorgias. The Alcibiades, not the Alcibiades. It works right here. I can look up and see which one it was. Carmides. Never mind. It was Carmides. Uh, Carmides. He also speaks up. Basically, speaks out directly against um, the the very common um, um, heterastic, especially kinds of relationships, like same sex relationships you'd, you'd find at the time in Athens. Uh, Plato is explicitly against such things. Um, but then, and most more notably. Um, There was this little bit from the Republic, uh, and I had one of my one of my earliest videos on this channel is about it. It's about um, it's a passage in the first book of the Republic. Um, oh, I wish I could remember the number offhand. One of my first videos on this channel. You might be able to find it if you're if you're looking. Uh, I'll put a link in the description after the stream. If not, uh, in any case, it is uh, it is about um, it, is, it is functionally an argument for what we would probably today call the um, what is it some okay so there have been various uh, libertarian philosophers who who've gone so far as to to put this forward as the uh, the zero harm principle that's it basically it is the point is that any harm done against another human being is simply and by necessity unjust and it's a very complex argument uh, and it's a very um very interesting argument it's one that isn't made very often so we get the evidence in here it was somebody killing the Sith woman Um, anyway, so what I'm saying, I think that, uh, I think that this argument is incredibly strong and isn't really uncovered, isn't really recovered until very sparsely throughout the medieval period and then really until the modern period. When anything like this argument is put forward, uh, which is the idea that that necessarily uh, harm is a violation of uh, of the human nature, harm to another human being, uh, because to do so, uh, Plato's argument is is roughly speaking, it the characteristic virtue of a human being, what makes a human being a good human being, is justice. A just person is a good person. Um. 
beyond this, we can say that, okay, so if if a human being is good when a human being is just, then harming a human being is what makes a human being less of a good human being. It harms their human nature. To harm someone is to make them less just and or less capable of doing justice. What this means is that justice, uh, if this is correct, then that means that justice, uh, part of a main part of justice is to cause others to be less just. And Plato argues through Socrates here, uh, and I think actually I would probably say that Socrates argues in this instance, uh, primarily because Plato doesn't pick this argument back up in any of his other dialogues, and the first book of the Republic was probably a very early dialogue, so um, likely representative of more of uh, Socrates' views. Um, but he points out that uh, that for justice to produce its opposite. Uh, would be absurd. It is impossible for a virtue or a power to produce its opposite, uh, especially including in another. Acting courageously cannot cause others to be cowardly, etc. Um, making music cannot cause others to lose their taste for music or become non become unmusical. Uh, all of this would be absurd. Uh, the steam vents are off. Let's get it. Phoenix says, it sounds like the uh, libertarian harm avoidance ethics based on the five moral pillars. I'm not sure. I mean, yes, there are there are plenty of people who use the... Uh, uh, who use something like a um, the five moral pillars to make an argument for something like this, but Plato doesn't really. Uh, it's entirely based upon the virtue of justice, and justice is... Uh, important place as uh, fundamentally constitutive of human nature. And I think it's a very strong argument. And it's one that you, you don't find outside of, I mean, at the time at least, or even, well, at the time, anywhere. Um, but even, uh, you don't find again, let's say, pretty much until the Gospels. Uh, with you know um, Christ's teachings of uh, of of nonviolence and um, and to return uh, return or to answer evil with good things like that uh, things like that are the only are the only other instance of of an ethical principle like this that's really the next chronologically which is fascinating I I I, I largely think I think at least I largely consider. Uh, Socrates to have been something like a prophet. Uh, hello, Selkath apprentice. Okay. That's what happens when you draw on me, I guess. Anyway. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a fascinating point uh, that was made, and I think that it's worth studying. Oh, Shasa! Intruders! Do we sound the alarm, Shasa? No, wait. We cannot always be running to the masters for help. We should handle this situation on our own. Perhaps this is a test the Smith had prepared for us. What are you doing here? Only masters and apprentices are allowed in here. Um, I... Uh, well... <laughs> I'm Hain Sharp. Shaylis has asked me to... Has, um, Shaylis has me investigating the disappearance of young Selkath. He's just standing there, menacingly with a gun. He pulled his blaster on me. And then I stunned him and cut him in half. Anyway. I told you your father would get suspicious, Sasa. He always hated the Sith. My father doesn't understand. He's blinded by his own prejudice. The Sith are evil. What they told you was a lie. 
The public propaganda. The Sith are the victims of lies and half-truths. They are not monsters, no more so than the Republic. The Sith have promised to guide us to the use of the Force as a sign of their good faith. And once the Republic is defeated, the Sith have promised to withdraw from Menard and respect our independence. Sith just want to corrupt you. Better us your lies. The Sith have treated us with nothing but respect and honor. You speak as if, you, if we are prisoners here, but we can leave whenever we wish. Our friend Gallus chose to leave, and he was returned safely to his home in Ato City. Chasa, what if they speak the truth? Remember what happened to Taris? Yes, certainly you must have heard of the destruction of Taris. It's your honorable friends that committed that atrocity. Taris was is nothing but a Republic lie. If the Sith were such monsters, then prove it to us. Surely there must be some evidence of the horrors they commit. The Sith are evil, Shasa. They will use you to conquer Manan for the Kolto. So you say, but why should we believe you? We need physical proof, not the words of some Republic sympathizer. Give me some time. I will find proof that the Sith are evil. Also, I think we should give them a chance to prove themselves. We will not report your presence to the Sith Masters yet. To bring us proof of Sith lies and torture, we will return to our families and report this to Otto City authorities. Till then, we will stay here and continue our training in the ways of the Force. I'm gonna, like, take some things here before I go. Alright, well, let's do that. Um... Yeah, let's figure that out first. Uh, how do we do this? I think we need to figure out if that if the friend of theirs actually came actually went back safely or not. I suspect he didn't. So so let's go talk to Shayless. Her mother. Or her father. Sorry. They're modernists, wipe them out. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil! <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I think he was down there in the swoop track area. <laughs> uh... I will find evidence that the Sith are evil. Come back seconds later with footage of their latest genocide. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what do they want? Like literal ashes of the planet Taurus? Which honestly, I've been thinking about lately. That, I mean, Taurus was a horrible place. An absolutely horrible place. Um, to the point where. The galaxy would probably have been better off if they had not just destroyed the city, destroyed the, the you know, bombarded the place from orbit, but, oh, oh gosh, excuse me, um, it probably would have been better off if they had base Delta zero the place, uh, glassed the planet, uh, or just death started, really, um. Maybe evacuate first. I don't know how you could evacuate that many people. There's probably trillions of inhabitants that they just wiped out. But, but, um, Taurus is also, like I said, an absolutely horrendously horrible place. Uh, Tifa, it's a shop. So, there's, um, Sunry's wife. Not around here. Keep moving. Wish I could remember where anything was on Manon. Anyway, um, as I was saying, though, I think um, if you if you look at actually look at um, galactic history after this, uh, you will find that. 
Taurus uh, is basically nothing but a hellhole. Uh, it is an irradiated wasteland um, filled with raccoons for thousands of years. Uh, by the time of the uh, by the time of the the, the the rise of the Empire era, the, the main uh, Star Wars movies, uh, it is repopulated. It's reestablished. There are cities uh, which are just as racist as they ever were, like horrendously horrendously racist. Uh, and the, there are still occasional outbursts of rack ghoul fever, which spreads throughout the galaxy on occasion, which is really bad. I hear you've been appointed as arbiter in Sunra's trial. My husband is innocent. Please don't let him go to jail for a crime he didn't commit. Was Sunri having an affair? Of, of course not. He... He... he is. I'm really sorry. Yes, he was having an affair. He was seeing that... That Sith woman. After all these years we've been together, he just... Just dropped me like that. Not publicly, or no. But inside, that's what it feels like. He started seeing Alasa last year. I... I had my suspicions for a while, but... He was careless. Pretty soon everyone knew. But even though I'm sure that Harlot was only using him, I know he couldn't have killed her. He came and confessed to the affair to me. He said he was going to there to break it off, to end it. Maybe the Sith woman attacked him and he had to defend himself. But even though he cheated on me, inside he's still the man I loved. Loved. He's too kind and gentle to have killed her in cold blood. I mean, he did apparently kill her, but he also probably had some reasons for that. We'll find out more. Good information. Terrible. Also, I think that's the voice of Dr. Chakwas. That's fact. Could be wrong. Don't worry, Laura. I'll save him. Find the real evidence. That's all I ask. The real evidence will prove Sunri didn't do this. All right. Uh, let's talk to Sunri. See what he has to add here. Jolly, coming to check in on an old man. I must confess, I, I would rather you were here to speak to the warden and begin my trial. Soon, old friend. But we don't want to go to trial until we've got the whole picture. Oh, I grow weary of staring at these four bare walls. But I suppose you know what you're doing. There's more than four walls in this room. The role of Arbiter cannot be taken lightly. Yeah, this is a round room. Or I guess like octagonal. And you can't see all of the wall. Okay, anyway. I need to investigate the case some more. Any ideas where I should look? I guess you could interview witnesses at the hotel where the murder happened. The Selkath already did that, but the fish folk don't have much rapport with offworlders. Maybe one of them was holding something back. But I was, think yes. you'd be better off investigating the Sith themselves. Maybe you could find some proof they planted evidence to frame me. Though that might mean figuring out a way into the Sith embassy. Anything else I can help you with? I want my arbiter to be well prepared before we go to trial. There's a few things we have to clear up. Go ahead, ask. Ask what you need to. I've got nothing to hide. There was a Rodian who planted evidence at the murder scene. A Rodian? I didn't know there were any Rodians on Manan. Well, it was like four of them. Ivark and this one named Glupar who was hanging around the hotel all the time. Okay, so... Maybe there are a okay. whole bunch of Rodians on Manan. But what does that matter? If he planted evidence at the scene, it's a clear sign of a frame-up. He probably took all the evidence of the real killer at the same time. The evidence of a Sith conspiracy keeps getting stronger, doesn't it? But I suspect there's still stuff you want to clear up. Go ahead, ask. Ask what you need to. I've got nothing to hide. Not true. 
I know you're guilty, Sunri. You've got the Republic's data recording. So the truth is out. I never meant to kill her, you know. When I found out she was a Sith spy using me to gain information, that something inside me just snapped. She didn't know I had found out. So I waited until she fell asleep. And then I... I killed her. Simple, really. But once I realized what I'd done, I, I panicked. I contacted those spies from the Republic to help me. They found the illegal monitoring device that the Sith had planted in the room, altered its recording to hide my part in it, and cleared up the evidence. I figured that was the end of it. But the Sith found out the truth, didn't they? The Sith must have been spying on me and Alasa, trying to make sure she wasn't a double agent. They must have seen the Republic spies getting rid of all the evidence. And so they planted their own evidence. Elasa must have stolen that hero's cross from me long ago and given it to her Sith masters like some kind of trophy. I just thought I'd misplaced it. But when the cross turned up on her body, I knew the Sith had put it there. So, now you know the whole story. What are you going to do? Erica says, that was a quick 180. I was framed! Oh, yeah, I killed her. <laughs> um, I don't know. You think I'm some kind of monster, don't you? All I did was kill a Sith. How many Sith have you killed? Dozens? Hundreds? Thousands? I That's wish. That's different, Sunri, and you know it. We don't kill them in cold blood while they sleep. I don't see how the two of us are any different. She was a spy. She was using me to get information so Malik's army could destroy the Republic. She deserved to die. We don't have all the information, though. Do we? Or do we? I thought there was more to find in the Sith base that I hadn't gotten to yet. I will also say that exposing the situation will have negative repercussions for the Republic. Significant ones. Ah, oh, man, I really should have quick saved for this. I'm debating between one and two. I'm hoping I may be able to, like, say this to him, because it's true. Um, but also... Not reveal all of the information at the trial. Killing her lover while she sleeps is murder, even if she is a Sith. That's undeniably true. Yes, she's a Sith, a spy, and a war criminal. But... If I confess, I'm looking at 20 years in prison! And the Otto City officials might even place Colto sanctions on the Republic Embassy. Without Colto, how can we treat the injuries to our soldiers on the front lines? You are right. I'm not going to expose you. I'm glad you decided to see reason in this. If I'm convicted, it could cause trouble for the Republic Embassy here on Manan. And none of us want that now, do we? Dark side points. Less. We're not fully exposing him. Um, that's the thing. Uh, well, actually, this actually brings up a good point. Um, the dif the difference between uh, a lie proper and a lie of omission. So these are very importantly different things. Ooh. Phoenix says, wake the deceptive war criminal up before you butcher them for catfishing you. Yeah, I mean, that is honestly a... That's a solid tactic. Um, basically getting someone to... Exposing someone such that they attack you and they can be killed in self-defense. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with that. Provoking an attack with the truth saying you are you're you're exposed for this there's nothing you can do now 
and so she attacks and you kill her in self-defense. Ethically speaking, that can be justified. The problem is... The problem is... I don't think that tactic would have worked for Sunry. Because he's an old man, and she's a trained Sith. Like, a Dark Jedi kind of Sith, but not just, like... Not just, like, a member of the, the Sith army. No, she is a trained Force user. She'd have killed him. That takes some options off the table. If you're news from a human, what have you discovered why the Republic is hiring mercenaries? Yes, they're sending them down to a secret base on the Hrakert Rift. The Hrakert Rift, it says I feared. The Republic is fortunate I was the one assigned to it to get this case. Human, allow me to be blunt with you. I report this violation to my superiors, the Republic will be banned from Manon. But I do not wish to do this. I see the Sith for what they truly are, ruthless and evil. The Republic has always respected our independence, but if they fall, the Sith will be quick to send an invasion fleet to cover Manon, conquer Manon. But I cannot simply ignore what the Republic has done. The Ragged Rift is the source of Manon's culto. I fear the science station may damage production of the delicate resource. Hmm. You think the Republic is trying to steal the culto, perhaps? An odd thing for the Republic to do, no? We must tell the Republic to stop this madness at once. Make them shut down the facility and recall their people before they do something we all regret. They can't. The Republic has recently lost contact with the science facility. Of course. I should have realized. Doubtless they were hiring the mercenaries to investigate the situation. But I fear mercenaries alone may not be enough to save their station. There are ancient mysteries within the Hrakot Rift that even we Selkath do not comprehend. I fear the Republic has awakened something that was best left undisturbed. I'm going to investigate the Hrakot Rift. As you wish, perhaps you will find the answers the mercenaries could not. We will keep our conversation secret, so that the vile Sith do not gain the, from the Republic's foolishness. I only hope my silence does not lead to disaster for Manan. Here is the payment I promised you. And now I must take my leave, human. My superiors are expecting a full report from me, and there is much I must do to ensure they cannot unrecover the Republic's actions. And see, there you go. Another instance of a lie of omission, uh, or withholding information, uh, which is very, di again, distinct from an outright lie, misinformation. So, the primary difference is that by refusing to, by not putting forward information that one has, one is not acting, simply. Not acting, where one does not have a specific and special obligation to act, cannot be unethical, can't be wrong. It can fail to be supererogatorily good, but it can't be wrong, it cannot be morally culpable. This is the same reason that, um, that, you know, the example of this, that uh, the difference between active and path passive euthanasia, for example, or so, so they're called in the bioethic literature, between um, putting someone down, killing someone medically, uh, and allowing them to die, withdrawing life support. This is why these are two radically different things as well. Um, it, it's the active-passive distinction in both cases. The other point about withholding the truth... Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, about something like a, quote, live omission um, is that one can... One can perfectly justly withhold information if one is not asked directly. If somebody doesn't ask you a question, not answering that question is not wrong. Uh, you don't have a special responsibility to, to, to tell everyone the truth about everything at all times, clearly. Now, if you do have a special obligation to tell, to tell someone something about something specific, like that guy over there, like our, our, Manon, uh, our Manon friend, that gets shaky. You may have a special obligation to tell someone something that you know. But again, under ordinary circumstances, we don't have such obligations. Um, an example of this might be if, if someone asks you to, hey, could you, um, could you see if you can find my phone? I think I lost it somewhere. You look around for it, and you find it. What do you tell them? If... Uh, if for whatever reason you don't want them to find it, you don't want them, maybe they're drunk and you don't want them calling their ex or something, 
It's for their own good, right? Okay. Can you lie when you say I didn't find it? If they asked you to find it and you agreed, can you withhold that information from them justly? Uh, again, omitting the possibility of the uh, of the returning the spear that was lent to you issue. Again, Plato. Um, but if you if you withhold that information and you agreed to give that information, you better have some serious either mental reservations or some kind of special circumstance that would justify doing so. Um, now, you might just look for it and not put in much effort and say you didn't find it. Nothing, again, nothing intrinsically wrong with that. Uh, you did not commit explicitly to putting in your full efforts to find the thing or whatever. Maybe that's fine. Uh, but having, if you do happen to know exactly where it is and you don't say where it is, that can be, that I think can, almost has to be culpable. Again, barring very extreme circumstances. Phoenix says, effectively, if you want to provide context to prevent evil, then to omit, to omit is to contribute to that evil. You might need to elaborate on that or rephrase. I'm not sure what you mean. So if to provide, if you must provide context to prevent evil, then to omit is to contribute to that evil. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you mean. I thought you were going with a in a different direction with that. So for example, if somebody asks you a very pointed and direct question, and you, you see this all the time in questioning of witnesses in a legal case, where an attorney will ask a very specific pointed question and ask only for that specific answer and nothing else. And by answering that question, absent any context, that answer becomes deceptive, in which case you would have an ethical, if not a legal, obligation to give the context so that your statement would not be deceptive, especially harmfully deceptive. Um... Again, this is a problem with um, with a lot of uh, a lot of court proceedings. You know, our modern American adversarial court system, especially, um, it has this problem of how do I put it that it it incentivizes sophistry. Um, I actually have another. Uh, um, relatively recent uh, from maybe a year or so ago a uh, video on Plato's Euthydemus which is about sophism sophistry uh, in which I use a uh, an example current in the news at the time uh, the uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse trial to demonstrate an example of from the from the dialogue from the Euthydemus about sophistry about asking questions in a very specific tailored way, expecting a very specific answer, but any, but but basically using that question to mislead, to trick the of to, to trick the interlocutor into uh, into getting themselves tied up in the question, answer, in question and answer. That anyone thinking even remotely clearly can get around this, um, and I use the example there of uh, Thomas Binger, the the prosecutor, the the. Pencil neck, the pencil neck prosecutor, the guy who who pointed an AR-15 at the jury box with his finger on the trigger, that guy, um, him, who uh, was a an incredible sophist in that in that trial because he asked uh, Rittenhouse about uh, a series of questions about uh, about use of force, things like that. Uh, in one case, he asked, "Did you intend to kill?" Um, Great. So you knew that sh that shooting somebody with the AR-15, with an AR-15 in close proximity in, in this place was likely to kill them. He says, yes. He says, okay, so you were intending to kill him. He says, no, I was intending to stop the threat. And you can just, I have this clip in the video, you can just see the frustration in the guy's face. Because he's, because just like Euthydemus and Dionysodorus, the two brothers who are sophists in the dialogue, they're trying to trip Socrates up. And Socrates isn't having any of it because he's answering questions more fully and providing context. And they just get furiously angry at him throughout. And you can see that same expression in Binger and Lunchbox, the, the two prosecutors, who I make fun of in the video. They deserve it. Um, Inc. says, for example, Rittenhouse shot three people, two of them died. 
Uh, he used an AR-15. He's being charged with murder. My overlords say he's guilty. Yeah, it's like using it the only the very specific information at hand and omitting if if omitting other information will lead to a deceptive outcome um then you have an obligation to either not answer the initial question or to avoid to provide additional context if the additional context is being prevented and prohibited you cannot provide that additional context then the right thing to do is to withhold the initial information anyway because it would be it would be fundamentally misleading you know this. All right, so this is the father. Human, you return. Have you information for me? Have you discovered the fate of my, the missing Selkaf youth? Have you news of my daughter, Shasa? I have information for you, Shalos. Excellent. You have done well. What have you learned? The Sith are training the Selkaf youth in the ways of the Dark Jedi. Yes, that makes sense. It is wonder I did not see this before. Manon's great strength is our neutrality. If Malak brainwashes our youth and indoctrinates them in the ways of the Sith, we will have a strong following among the Selkaf people. Strong enough to seize control of Manon and Arkolto. My daughter Shasa, she too has been indoctrinated in the Sith camp. Your daughter is still with the Sith, Shadeless. Shasa, my daughter, what have these Sith monsters done to my your mind? I will report this to the authorities, though I fear without proof there's little they can do to get my daughter back. I hope so. I thank you for all you've done, human. Here are the credits I promised you. Keep your credits, Shalos. A Jedi has no need of such rewards, especially for such a thing. Hi, Bubba. You refuse my reward? Truly, you humans are a noble breed. Perhaps my species is underestimated your kind. Hey, kid. That was a good thing you did there. Almost brought a tear to this old man's eye. That was a truly noble act. The Jedi Council would be pleased. Please excuse me now, human. I must go speak to the Manon authorities about the Sith plot and what they have done to my beloved daughter. Inside. Um... All right, so Bublin, what, what, basically what we're doing now, uh, we have, we need proof somehow to present to Shasa, his daughter, that the Sith are evil. I don't know how we're going to do that exactly. We've also uncovered a lot about the, uh, the Sunri murder trial. So Jolie's old friend Sunri is accused of killing... Uh, his Sith mistress, which he in fact did, as it turns out, um, because it turns out that they were basically spying on each other, and he found out that she was spying, she was spying on him for the Sith, betrayed him, so he killed her, and then the Republic tried to cover it up, and the Sith tried to frame him, even though he did it, but they didn't know he did it, but they tried to frame him anyway. It was crazy, crazy situation. We can basically uh, by giving and withholding certain bits of information, which is what I was just talking about. Uh, we can basically tip the scales of the court, it looks like, in just about any direction, based on what we know. Um, Sunry story. Friend with the evidence of the recording of Kim killing Elasa, Sunry admitted to his crime. He refuses to confess to the court, however. He says he will not betray the Republic or harm it because of what happened. Point. Sunry's wife really, really wants, uh, really, really wants him to be free. Honey, jolly, just Oh, right, uh, Karth's son. Better than most TV. I, I love this quest because it's it's absolutely ridiculous. It's it's convoluted. It belongs on, like, a courtroom drama. Not even a courtroom drama, more like a, um... More like M.A.S.H. Something like M.A.S.H. This would fit well there. Okay, um... Murder trial. Anything? No, I mean, how do we do this? How do we find evidence that the Sith are evil? What would that even involve? That just be like recordings of them doing evil, nasty, bad guy things because I'm sure there's plenty of those. Ooh. That's a good question. 
Bevelin asks, what are the chances of you playing Battlefront 2, either 2005 or 2017? Um, 2005 might be a problem. Um, if only because of the massive amounts of copyrighted music that would be hard to remove. Um, the Because, for example, the soundtrack of this game is... is uh, is completely original, and so it's not copyrighted in the same way. I mean, it is, but it's uh, it's basically YouTube doesn't flag it. However, because Battlefront 2005 uses all and only original uh, Star Wars music, uh, the one time I did stream it, because I streamed uh, most of a Galactic Conquest once when I couldn't get Hi, another Zymark. game to work. I oh, gotta man, stock up. They might be sending me to the front to battle the Sith. I hope you win your glory by smashing their fleet and return without injury. Nice of him. Um, yeah, it would be... Uh, the, the issue with it is that basically the, the, the music is almost entirely copyrighted. Uh, and the one time that I did try to stream uh, stream Battlefront 2, the old, the old one, uh, the 2005 one, it, uh, I, I got like three or four separate copyright takedowns yeah i mean it's it's obviously fair use it it, it got fixed eventually um like the restrictions were lifted after 30 days or whatever but it was 30 days with ads running on my video from from lucasfilm i guess or whatever third party does it on their behalf i don't even know okay how do i Hmm. You streamed 2017 with no issues, but experiences may vary. That one might be worth doing. Might be worth doing. It's got an interesting story. A surprisingly interesting story. I was I was not expecting all that much from it. Um, but I really do like the the uh, the sort of Empire Turncoat storyline there. The uh, also as well the the sort of the story of. Um, What's it called? Of uh, Operation Cinder. That's it. There's a lot really interesting about that. That whole thing. Uh, and it's pretty fundamental to the uh, to the sort of new canon version of uh, of the fall of the Empire. Where am I going? What do I need to do? <laughs> yes, Phoenix. The copyright corporate overlords seek power for their own, for its own sake. Yeah, they do. They really do. Um, some of it's for money, but they're not going to get almost any money from my streams. I get like double digit viewers. I don't know what they're, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, it's, it's, I'm not even, a, I'm not even completely sure where I'm going at this point. I keep trying. Bublin says it might've been, uh, it would've been cooler uh, would have been cool, more cool to stay with the Empire the whole game, I think. But it's amazing how they make uh, made free DLC to tie into the sequels. Actually, yeah, that was a that was really good. I thought um, that little DLC storyline with uh, with uh, with her daughter that was really good. Um, the one bit where you play as Kylo Ren, I didn't love so much. It was trying very hard to be trippy, um, but it. But that always, like, trippy segments in games usually happen at the detriment of, like, at the detriment of gameplay and sometimes even at the detriment of storytelling. I think that was one of those cases. But after that, the mission to, like, rescue her daughter, that whole deal, that was great. That was really, really good. I thought that was really good. So maybe I will. Maybe I will. That's, a uh, that's on the table. I wouldn't say no. It could have been cool to see the the full Empire perspective, but I like that. I like that the reason she left was the reason a lot of people left the Empire. It was Operation Cinder, and that was kind of the point of Operation Cinder in the canon was to to sort of prune the Empire, so prune it down to the the radical, crazy extremists who would go off and become the First Order. Uh, it at least makes sense. It at least makes sense why she would defect when she did. Uh, let's see. 
Hovland says, Arkham Asylum unfortunately made every AAA single-player game or campaign think they needed one. Yeah. I mean... I, I like... I like DLCs that expand things. I, I even... Because I play a lot of stuff offline, too. I really do like, especially like for Star Wars games, I really like the licensed music. I liked it in Far Cry 5, too. I like the radio stations that's just playing country tunes. You know, that's great. That's cool. Uh, or like classic rock stuff. That's fun. The problem is that, you know, when I start streaming it, it I get takedowns. Um, still, by the way, still half of my Far Cry streams from a few months, a few months back, like half of those still have outstanding claims. And they, I, they, they went back after I appealed. Uh, I can do them one at a time. I can challenge them, but why? I get no money from it anyway. I'm not monetized, so I don't know. Basically, I just have a little disclaimer at the bottom. Hey, turn on your ad blocker. So, yeah. Uh, if you, if you, by the way, if you're watching my channel and and you do run an ad blocker, don't feel guilty about that even slightly. I'm not monetized. I get no money if ads do run on my videos. That is against my will, because most of my stuff is educational. Uh, it's educational content. My my goal for it is to to use it for classes and stuff. So, I mean, streams, that's that's us hanging out. But my actual videos, if ads show up on those, go ahead and ad block them. I have no problem with that at all. Um, please do, in fact. Uh, it's actually my goal to get enough uh, enough like subscribers and views and stuff to get monetized so I can specifically turn off ads on my educational videos because man i really need to all right i i don't know what to do about this how do we find evidence that the sith are evil what the heck like, yeah they are we get it okay so, like i'm gonna uh, you know what sure i'm gonna go back to the sith base i'm gonna talk to them see what they want It's got to be that friend of theirs. They wouldn't have mentioned that otherwise. YouTube advanced. Worst to stop. I'm not sure what you mean. What is that? Phoenix says it's not about the 69 cents that they make from pilfering your ad revenue, but sending a message. The message being that the, uh, that the boomers have destroyed society with their copyright laws. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Um, it's not just the boomers, it's the mouse as well. <laughs> Bublin says, an evidence that the Sith are evil, Blu-ray box set of the series. I mean, yes. Yeah, that'll do. Just, just like, here. Here, watch, um, watch these movies real quick. Only like, I don't know, like 12 hours or so? Here, just watch this. Um, That'll that'll really explain. There's this Palpatine guy who's going to show up in like 3,500 years. Trust me. <laughs> oh man. So there's this guy by the name of Darth Sidious. Uh, so YouTube Vanced was slash is an Android app that mimics the real app without ads. Ooh. Ooh. I wish that still existed. That'd be awesome. That's one thing is that I I can never find... Oh. There's the evidence. Tell, tell Shasa the Sith. There's the evidence. Oh, there it is. There's the, there's the evidence. I had to look in the next room. <laughs> oh my god, I thought this was more complicated than it was. Um, if you like this, there's an animated interquel series that's often even better than the movies. Plenty of evidence here. That's true. That is true. Yeah, you get to get that too. Um, yeah, plenty of evil Sith cackling going on in there. In, in both animated inter interquel series. And, um, I mean, I'll tell you what, Rebels does a great job of showing the Sith being evil. They are, they are, uh, comic book villains in there. 
I do assume you were referring to the Clone Wars, though. That one, that one too, obviously. Anyway, this tortured cell calf was holding some sort of token. Some sort of token. Uh, ever since it was pointed out to me that some sort of is like a god awful bit of techno babble that's overused like hell in a lot of science fiction, especially Star Trek. I've been a little bit hesitant to use it in my own writing and narration. I mean, it's really useful. It's so useful. But... Man, is it overused. Bublin says, I haven't seen Rebels personally, except for the bit with Kenobi killing Maul. That's part of the series, so you got that. Um, that is an amazing scene. Um, but most of it is actually good. I've been re-watching it lately. Um... Yeah, I figured you meant the Clone Wars. Uh, it is actually really good. Uh, it's way better than its reputation. Uh, I'm on season two. Um, I'm I'm still disappointed that the Grand Inquisitor was only a uh, only the premier antagonist for one season. He should have lasted longer than that. He had he had a really a really awesome death though, so that's cool. <clears throat> Much cooler than than his uh, death in Kenobi. Ugh. <laughs> Lightsabers are non-lethal now, guys. Anyway. Anyway, I will... If you'd like, I could rant about Kenobi for a long time. <laughs> it is actually very good, though. Um, the Inquisitor is definitely the best part of Season 1. Um, season 2 is a bit of a low point because they have the, the third... Wait, second sister and fourth brother? The brother from, from Kenobi. The one with the the one with the hat. Um, yeah, he's in he's in Rebels, um, but they are kind of kind of ridiculous in season two. Um, but then season three and four are actually back to really good again. So it, it, I think it works. I think it works really well. I think it's a, an overall a very good series. Um, the the development that Ezra, Ezra Bridger gets throughout the series is pretty good. Um, the writing for Hera, especially, as well as for Kanan, are excellent. Excellent. Um, they are actually believable adult characters. Like regular old people. Also, one of them happens to be an ace pilot, and the other one happens to be a Jedi. But the writing for them is, is it's just very, very good. Um, they're very good characters. Sabine is is a Mary Sue. And Zeb is annoying. But... And Chopper's a war criminal, but that's kind of fun. So there's down points in the series. There's down there's a downside to it. But overall, I do think that it's definitely worth watching. Uh Phoenix says, I would like uh, I would like you to rant about Kenobi. But I don't want to distract you from your stream. I won't be selfish. Maybe I'll get I'll I'll go th I'll I'll rant about it gradually as I go through. <laughs> You brought us evidence to back up your accusations. Have you found proof the Sith are evil as you claim? I found a young Silcath dying from torture here. He gave me this. Trasa, this is the pin I gave Gallus when we were children. There's blood on it. You could have found this anywhere. For all we know, you killed Gallus. The Sith tortured him to death, Shasa. You know it's true. I can show you. It is like 20 feet from here. Not gonna do something else. Yes, I believe them. How else would they have found this pin? I I don't want to believe it, but I can no longer deny what I know to be true. Gallus is dead, and the Sith are responsible. I must apologize for doubting you. The Sith are truly as evil as you claimed. We must report this to the Otto City authorities. Yes, we must report this at once. We thank you, human, for showing us the truth. You've saved us from a terrible mistake. You've been saved from more than you know. Given time, the Sith would have turned you fully to the dark side, and you would have betrayed your world gladly. Quickly, my friends, you can stay in here no longer. You must flee this foul embassy and warn our people against the plot to corrupt the Manon youth. Wait, you're you're taking me with you? I, I, I have stuff to do here. Okay, no, we're good. Hey, light side. Um. Oh, also, Kotor rants. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I'm 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 gonna be doing some of that. Hmm. 
I, I agree. Bublin says it's really it's a disservice to call well-expressed verbose opinions rants. This is a uh, a good parasocial relationship. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I think that, I mean, to be fair, some of the stuff that I do on stream, I consider rants. They're not particularly well thought out. They are more like stream of consciousness. It's just that I'm relatively practiced at speaking extemporaneously about things that I I have some background thinking about. Um, even, you know, being a being an, a, an actual college philosophy professor, I am good at just speaking off the cuff about things. I don't do lecture notes. I don't do PowerPoints. I do read the material beforehand and then talk about it and entertain questions. That's my lecture style. Uh, so I'm decently good at this sort of thing. And this, I honestly, one of the main reasons I do these kinds of th the, the streams like this uh, is practice. Is so I can get relatively good at speaking extemporaneously uh, in a clear or at least a relatively clear way about topics that come up, that come up naturally. Uh, because that's the kind of thing that happens in the classroom, and it's an important skill to, especially for me to have, but it's a useful skill for most people. In any case, though, I think that, uh, like I said, a lot of the things that I do talk about are rant-like, and uh, a lot of them I will reform into videos. Um, for example, I was, uh, when, if we're talking about media criticism and stuff like that, when Loki came out, I was incredibly critical of Loki for very, very precise theological and philosophical reasons. Mostly philosophical, a bit of theological, mostly philosophical. Um, and so I spent a solid hour or so on a Dragon Age Origins stream trying to get my thoughts out, interspersed through gameplay, until eventually I just sort of, I sort of just stood, I stood still with my character and I just talked about it, talked it out for half an hour. And then a week or two later, I put it all into a video that's about 50 something, I think it's about an hour long just under an hour long. And I put it into a well-edited video that I that I composed and thought through, and even still, I, I think I kind of missed a thing or two, but something I may wind up addressing later. Uh, in any case, that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of process I wind up going through when I'm putting my thoughts together. Uh, it's also the kind of process that I do for writing a paper, is I will, I'll just kind of spew things out, then I will reorganize it properly. Uh, in any case, yeah, I'm okay with this being called a rant, this kind of stuff. Uh, especially talking about Kenobi, because again, I I'm not uh, honestly I have I only watched the first two episodes, actually watched the first two episodes. Beyond that, I've seen clips, I've seen synopses, I've seen critiques. That's it, because I don't I don't want to see this done to one of my favorite characters. I, f I don't want to see this done to a few of my favorite characters. Because Leia is another of my favorite characters. Man, that not good. Ah, hello, droids. Uh, how about Bastila? You go ahead and uh, destroy droid. Destroy droid. Selkath. Stasis. Suppression first, then stasis. What? <laughs> okay, that was easy. Anyway, that was simple enough. Yeah, I do think... Um, what was the thing that brought up my Kenobi ring? Grand Inquisitor? Oh, right. The the, the Grand Inquisitor and uh, him uh, dying and then somehow the Grand Inquisitor returned thing. Um, at this point, I... I'm trying to think if lightsabers have been done well at all recently. They're obviously done really poorly in the sequel trilogy. Like, obviously and really, really poorly. Um, uh, How did you get in okay. here? Here we go. Wait. I recognize you. Lord Malak was most displeased when he learned you had escaped Taris alive. He has promised a great reward to whoever destroys you. Well, let me guess. You intend to collect this reward, right? Jump through the door from Kenobi's neck. 
Master, give us the honor of aiding you in destroying this enemy of the Sith. See? What did I tell you? As you wish, my eager apprentices. We shall remove this thorn from Malak's side once and for all. Whirlwind. Stasis Field. Advanced Lightsaber Throw. Advanced Lightsaber Throw. Advanced Lightsaber Throw. Bunch of Force Suppressions. And let's go three. That'll be enough. I'm here. Okay, there we go. This is unbelievably easy. The master is just going down like a chimp. Alright. Oh my god, that was pathetic. Oh, that was pathetic. Anyway, so that worked out fine. Phoenix says, I measure how good a Star Wars movie slash show is by its memes. For example, the prequels in the original has the most memes, therefore are the best. And the new trilogy only has three or four. Does Kenobi have memes? Um, it has one of the best, at least recently. Uh, it has the uh, the absolutely incredible um, uh, Uncle Owen, like you trained, like you trained his father, uh, witty comeback meme. That's a really good one, and it's it's very versatile. So, there's at least that. Ah, uh, Jedi Master Robe. I already have a Master Robe. Bastila. Jerk Jedi Master Robe. Jolie. Jedi Knight. Dark Jedi Knight. Now. Principles 4. Dexterity plus 1. No. Strength plus 4. Yeah, absolutely. Strength is good. I can't. Can't. Okay, cool. Anyway. But mostly, uh, that's really all of the memes. There are some memes that are just making fun of it. Uh, like, uh, like the, the bit where it's like, where it's, there's the upward shot of of the Grand Inquisitor and Vader standing standing over Reva, and they're just glowering down at her, um, and it's making fun of the composition of it. Um, and there's things about how like, oh man, one of the good ones I saw was a uh, was Impractical Jokers, uh, like them saying into the it's like the three of them saying into the saying into the the microphone. Okay, now tell her she's Grand Inquisitor. Ry and then it's Vader telling Reva, "Rise, Grand Inquisitor," and then they're cracking cracking up laughing because. It's all a trick. It's all a rather funny trick, quite honestly. Oh, I've been exploded. I'm here. What? You need? what? Got it. Well, I kind of got blown up a little bit, but it's fine. Turned out fine. But yeah, that, there are some memes. There are some decent memes. They're not amazing, but they're decent. Um, I would say more than the sequels. Uh, probably not as much as the Mandalorian. Uh, but I, that's the thing. There are more. There are more prequel memes than original tril trilogy memes. So it's hard to say that the 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 number and quality of the memes is directly, in any way, directly proportional to the quality of the product. Because I'm pretty sure that, I think, I think we could probably agree that the original trilogy is better than the prequels. It doesn't have as good memes, or as many. Um, I do think, though, that, okay, so, the problem I was getting into is that lightsabers are treated horribly by any new Star Wars media. 
any, any of it, any new Star Wars media uh, treats lightsabers terribly. I mean, obviously the, it was the whole like throwing it over his shoulder thing with Luke, but, but even how they're used in combat, they're used as like ridiculous baseball bats in the sequels. Um, which is horrible. I, I hate that so much. It's a more elegant weapon for a more civilized age. It's not a bat to be swung around and bop people in the head with. Ridiculous. Uh, like the, the any of the fights in the in the sequel trilogy are just inelegant, wacky bat games. I hate it. Um, Kenobi is somehow worse. The fight between Vader and Obi Wan. So Rebels got criticized for their Macquarie style, really thin lightsaber blades. Well, Obi Wan is using lightsaber blades that are just like fat, like this big around lightsaber blades. For some ridiculous reason, I have no idea why the visual effects, why the visual effects have the lightsaber blades being so thick and girthy. It's it looks ridiculous. Uh, it's way worse than the weird, admittedly weird, thin Macquarie style blades that you get in Rebels. Way worse, way worse. But especially when like Vader is just wailing on Obi Wan and he's just like, no, no. He does. Oh man. Oh right. That's it. That's one of the things. One of the things that happens that pisses me off is is a weird grip change in that fight. This is one of the little bits that I noticed. There's a weird grip change that, that Obi-Wan does. So he's going like this, and he's blocking, right? Blade is here. He's blocking. He's blocking a downward a downward pummel. Right? And he goes... What the hell was that? He switches his grip. He switches his, his, his rear hand grip to another, to an inverse position, to to press harder to block. Kenobi is a master of Form 3. Form 3 is a defensive style. He should not need to do that. He should simply not be blocking like this on a downward strike. He should be blocking like this. It's just bad. It's sloppy. Like, so much of the lightsaber choreography is incredibly sloppy. And it shouldn't be. There's no excuse for this. They have Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen. We know from experience they know how to swing lightsabers around like champs. But they're just not doing it. It's not doing it. They're just not doing it. Um, And then in the scene that they... I mentioned this last week at some point. In the scene in episode 4... Yeah, the Fortress Inquisitorious one. Uh, the one they stole from uh, the Force Unleashed. The scene they stole from the Force Unleashed. Uh, or borrowed, or whatever. Uh, where Obi-Wan uh, takes out Stormtroopers in the dark. Uh, and he just, like, bashes them with the lightsaber. And at one point, the lightsaber bounces off a Stormtrooper's chest plate. Like, Dude, why? Why would you do that? Why would you have that happen? Like, reshoot it. That was a bad take. It looked like it was a bad take. Like, it was supposed to go through, or or it was supposed to cut differently, but instead it just goes, bop, bop. And it's like, it bounces? Ugh. God, it was really bad. Um, Phoenix says, I can agree that the original trilogy is objectively better, but I subjectively love the prequels more. Uh, memes and memories amplify the enjoyability. That's true. I, I, I can, I can get on board with that. I can get on board with that, I think. Extra thick lightsabers. Yeah, they're girthy. Girthy sabers. So there is, by the way, in the EU at least, there is a canonically thick lightsaber. It's called a, it's called a light club. It's usually wielded by, like, larger species. Um, I think in the Clone Wars, um, Ong Krell's lightsabers would qualify because they're, they are thick. They're thick and girthy. The problem is, like, Vader's lightsaber and Obi-Wan's lightsaber is just as thick and girthy as Pong Krell's from the Clone Wars. Which is ridiculous. Anyway. Phoenix says, I do sword fighting. That grip change you just showed me has almost made me commit Sudoku. I don't blame you because it's not even, it's not, I, I don't, maybe I didn't make this clear enough. 
It's not even he does this and like in between strikes he changes. No. He's in the bind like this. The lightsabers are in the bind. So he has Vader's lightsaber is is down on him like this. And he actively changes his grip while in the bind to do this. And somehow he didn't die. I remember um, I was teaching, uh, when I used to LARP, I was teaching a friend of mine um, to, to sword fight properly. And for some reason, uh, she would do, instead of gripping a sword this way, she would grip it like this. Inverted bottom hand. Which I assume is because it was for pommel control. Like it's, She learned at some point pommel control, like a flat bottom palm like this. And then it just kind of adapted into a in, weird inverted grip like this. And I was like, what are you what are you doing with your hand? And then I just go smack and it flies away. <laughs> because that's how that works. <laughs> uh, it, it was so bad. It was so bad. It was... Why is this happening in a professional production? This isn't even like the major things that everybody's complaining about. Like everybody has noticed the whole like hiding Princess Leia under a trench coat thing, which is like hilariously absurd. But... Yeah, it's hilariously absurd, but at the same time, like... What the heck? Oh, oh, okay. Wait. Where am I? East. Shop. Sith base. Oh, I went the wrong way. Okay, that's why. Um. But yeah, it's... Very bad. And there's no excuse for being for it being this bad. Bubblin says, I think the sequels work better as a duology with Force Awakens than The Last Jedi. You'd need to edit it somewhat. <clears throat> uh, so basically better without The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. It would probably be better... But again, you'd need to edit them somewhat, so it doesn't seem like you're leading into something further. Orchata, by the way, which I'm just... Those of you who aren't, who haven't been with the channel long, Orchata is an absurd channel meme. Uh, neither Kylie nor Eddie are here tonight, so they can't explain it, so I guess I'll have to. Um, we had a, an intense argument at one time at one point that lasted for about 20 30 minutes uh when my chat wasn't cat wasn't like registering so i could i wasn't seeing the chat until i refreshed it and there was just this intense intense dispute debate argument call it whatever you want um about whether or not orchata is real whether it really exists or not I'm just like, and I come back to see this. I'm just like, what is, what is happening? <laughs> um, last items, data pad. Data pad contains detailed descriptions of you and Bastila. It also has a brief message. Bastila has escaped Taurus. Whoever can find and dispose of her and her Jedi companion will be greatly rewarded by Lord Malak himself. Of course. Anyway, as I've said, Horchata does exist and it's delicious. Mmm. Mmm, creamy rice water. Anyway, um, let's go over things with Sunri one more time, then start the trial and get this over, shall we? Um, yeah, I think that... I think Snoke would have been really interesting if he were something like an ancient dark side entity or something like that instead of a weird pseudo-clone thing like they did in Rise of Skywalker. Um, Rise of Skywalker did a lot to ruin the stakes of the previous two. Really bad. Um, yeah, like, I was even, so after, so in that interim period between The Force Awakens, or between um, The Last Jedi and uh, and the, the Rise of Skywalker, my favorite pet Snoke theory was that he was Valkorian. Um, or Valkorian, or 
uh, the Sith Emperor from from sort of this time period, which, you know, weirdly fits because he's this dark side entity. He's this massively powerful, basically immortal dark side entity from beyond known space, just like we thought Snoke was in The Force Awakens and all of the supplementary material from the force awakens because remember when the when the emperor had an observation observation facility on Jakku the, which was pointing towards the unknown regions because he was concerned about some kind of ancient powerful dark side presence that scared even palpatine and so that was implied to have been snoke remember that anyone remember that cuz i remember that i read aftermath anyway Anyway, but um, that, that was, uh, my theory was that it was Valkorian, uh, I, which I knew was probably not going to happen, because it would have been way too deep of a cut for it to be Valkorian, but it would have been cool. It would have no. been very cool. I'll rot in here if I have to, but I won't betray the Republic. Do what you have to, but know what the consequences will be. It was very dramatic. Let's do it. Let's save first. Phoenix says, I reckon the Disney trilogy would have been better if they'd planned it out. Uh, absolutely. George Lucas offered them a story and they ignored it, so they have no excuse for screwing it all up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. There, I've, there's no doubt in my mind that they could have made an absolutely stellar Disney, uh, say Disney trilogy. Uh, sequel trilogy. The problem is that it was mismanaged. It was horribly mismanaged. Honestly, though, I'll also say that with, with what we've what we've been otherwise seeing... I don't know if they have the quality of writers. I don't know if the quality of writers are in the industry right now. Like, look at all the crap we're getting. Look at all the absolute garbage we're getting with major franchises right now. Star Wars is trash. Marvel is b very swiftly becoming trash. Excuse me. Uh, Star Trek is becoming unwatchable trash. Uh, with the, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard relatively good things about Strange New Worlds, so maybe that might be okay, because they're returning to formula, <laughs> more or less. I don't know, maybe. Um, but so many major science fiction franchises, and even fantasy franchises, if you look at like Wheel of Time and what, what's about to happen to Lord of the Rings, it's all just crap. And a lot of it is well-planned-out crap. But it's crap nonetheless. It's because of the poor writing. Which is tragic. You're the Arbiter in the Sunry Alasa murder case. I hope you are as impartial as the office is traditionally supposed to be. The off-worlders have a tendency to ignore the rule of law in favor of some rather irrational causes. What is it I can do for you now? Uh, I want to begin Sunry's trial now. Are you certain, human? Once the trial has begun, it cannot be stopped. Once judgment is given, the case can never be reopened. You must be certain the investigation is complete before you would request a trial. That is the role of the Arbiter. Are you certain you wish to begin the trial now? For your death, flipperhead! No. no. Um, Phoenix says, random. Uh, modern writing is so bad that Sony released a movie twice and it flopped twice. <laughs> oh, God, because they believe this stupid internet hype. God. Yeah, that's that was hilarious. God, everything about Morbius was I didn't see it, so I don't know if the actual movie was hilarious, but everything surrounding it was. Oh gosh. Now, um I'm I'm gonna link a playlist as well. Uh, if you haven't seen these, uh Critical Drinker uh has a uh series of videos on uh why modern writing sucks or why modern movies suck. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with poor writing and why the writing is so crap. And a lot of it is uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, with um, writing like like children. They don't understand how adults work because these people are so detached from ordinary reality. Um, the the other thing the other thing that <clears throat> I don't think the drinker has really pointed out, except on and, and he's mentioned this sort of thing on uh, on live streams and stuff, but I don't think he has a uh, like a dedicated video about it. One thing that I've been noticing recently is that there's this this tendency among writers to write to a scene. 
Like, they have this idea, this vision in mind, not for a story, not for an overarching plot or, or something that overall needs to happen, a character journey, anything like that. They have cool scenes that they've pieced together. And they have this sort of constellation of neat little scenes. And they just kind of draw in the blanks and try and figure out, okay, how do we get to this cool scene? How do we get to this cool scene? How do we get to this cool scene? Oh, here's how. And they just kind of fill in the blanks with whatever contrived crap you need to get there. Which is why, even in a lot of the otherwise terrible modern Star Wars... Uh, and look at The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is a good example of this. The, the confrontation between Luke and Kylo, other than his ending line of see around, kid, that was dumb. But most of that scene is pitch perfect. Great. But they didn't think about how to get there. They didn't think about the repercussions. They didn't think about why or anything. It's like, how do we get to this confrontation between Luke and Kylo? Or, I've got an idea for a really cool visual. Hyperspace kamikaze. And they don't think about, well, why isn't this a standard operating procedure for every military that has ever existed in the Star Wars galaxy? Because it would be. Right? Just droid-piloted missiles. Droid-piloted, hyperspace-capable missiles. Wipe out fleets. Wipe out entire fleets. Probably just probably crack the crust of planets. Mm. Yeah, why not? Every major sci-fi franchise that has faster than light travel and that has existed for long enough for world building to actually become a concern has some inbuilt reason why those why that specific maneuver is impossible. Um I forget what it is in Star Trek. It's something about the coherency of the warp bubble or something like that. Uh, like the warp bubble would de destabilize and you'd be ripped out and then you'd be then you'd just crash at sublight speeds or something something like that. I don't remember the, the specifics of it. Uh in Mass Effect for example, um because the because the FTL drives that every every galactic civilization has ever used, they are all of uh of precursor design, so in our case in this cycle's case Protheans. Um, what that means is that these designs can be traced all the way back to the Reapers, and then Reapers realized that being rammed at superluminal speeds was a was an inherent weakness, and so they built a failsafe mechanism so fundamentally into the design of FTL technology, uh, that of Mass Effect based FTL technology, that is that if you come into contact with an object, or are about to come into contact with an object, you're dropped out. It's a good explanation. It's not a great explanation. I think a better explanation would have been your mass is reduced to zero, which is how you're able to uh, to travel faster than light. So if you run into something, the impact will destroy your ship and have no no effect on what you impact. That was a speculation that was going on before the bit of lore dropped about the uh, about the Reapers putting it into the technology. Okay, cool, cool. Fans did a great job of it. Uh, Star Wars does it with mass shadows. That hyper uh, that hyperspace is a separate dimension. A separate dimension of space and time. Uh, it does not exist in the strictest sense uh, in obeying the laws of physics. Uh, it's basically um, a, a an alternate dimension where the minimum speed is light is the speed of light. You pop your ship in the surrounding space into this alternate dimension, and then uh, you pop back into existence where you want to go. In between, there are what are called mass shadows. There are these shadows cast by uh, material objects on uh, in the real world, in, in real space, cast into hyperspace. Those mass shadows can affect hyperspace, but cannot be affected by it. So what this means is if your ship is in hyperspace and it passes into a mass shadow, so like, you know, a planet, your ship gets annihilated, and the planet you run into experiences nothing. And this is why you have uh, gravity wells being a being a major major concern for hyperspace travel, and why traditionally in the EU hyperdrives were restricted uh, such that if you in, if you enter a gravity well of a certain intensity, uh, you're automatically taken out of hyperspace. And this is how interdictors worked by projecting a false gravity well to trick the hyperdrive into pulling you out or making it so that you can't jump in. 
this is different from how how new Disney canon interdictors work, which physically pull a ship out of hyperspace with gravity fields, which is a radically different thing. And that could be also radically weaponized in very different ways. But they haven't done that. They haven't, they haven't thought it through. This is also how, um, how in, in EU, uh, if you were very clever very careful and very lucky and usually force sensitive you can get around interdiction fields by just turning off the safeties now there's a very good chance that you'll immediately die if you turn off the safeties but maybe not and it'll help you get out of the inter interdiction field yeah yeah uh yeah like phoenix says all science fiction have uh, has rules to prevent people from cheesing the physics system yeah exactly and the old EU rules for hyperspace were incredible. They were incredibly detailed, elaborate, developed over like 30 years. Uh, and they all had a reason. Like, for example, there was another one where um, this was implemented for... In the, um, the Black Fleet Crisis. I forget if that was the name of the book series, but it was... It was it was in between the X-Wing series and the the New Zen Vong War, somewhere in there, in there. Um where there was this there was this this tyrannical political leader who needed to be like exiled by Imperials, and the Imperials basically uh took him into a ship in hyperspace and then put him in an escape pod and then gave him this whole long spiel about how our scientists have never discovered how to get a ship to how to get things to to go back into real space from hyperspace without the use of a hyperdrive engine. Uh, we thought it would be incredibly useful for deploying munitions. I was like, dude, yeah, it would. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> like, if you could just... And and so, basically, he uses it to strand this guy in hyperspace until he dies of, dies of exposure and hunger and thirst and stuff in an escape pod, which is a horrifying way to go, but because it's an Imperial sadist guy who's exiling this guy. He was, he was a bad dude, but still. Anyway, then you get to, for example, Rebels, which, well, like I said, while well, it is very good, they flip this, they invert it, and they have, uh, what is it, Kanan and, I think it's just Kanan and Ezra in the Phantom, the little, the little auxiliary ship, um, deploy from the Ghost, the bigger ship, at light speed, and because the little ship does not have a hyperdrive engine, they basically fall out of hyperspace. Why don't you do this to deploy things from very vulnerable carrier ships? Why don't you do this to deploy munitions? Why don't you do this to deploy high-yield warheads? Why don't you use this? Well, because it would destabilize things, and they didn't think about that. Whereas the authors of the EU did think about that, and how much it would destabilize military technology. So they came up with a solution, and it's a solution that the new writers have completely ignored because they're not as concerned about world building. Anyway, let's get to this trial. The thumbnail indicates that we're actually going to finish this tonight, so let's just, let's go for it. Very well, human. I should advise the court. We will begin immediately. All right. The records show the trial of Sunry versus the Otto City Authority has convinced presiding or judges Shelkar, Josa, Nalashekan, Kota, and Dula. This trial is to determine the culpability of Sunry in the death of the Sith Elasa. Representing Sunry in his defense as a member of the Jedi Order, do you have any opening statements? You will find some. No, I'm not kidding. Um. I have no comments at this time. Acting as a prosecutor for the Auto City Authority is an Imperial observer from the Sith Empire. It is an honor to see justice served. And I will see Sunri is executed for the crime he has committed. Do not be too overzealous in pressing your, com your commission, Sith. The first matter of business is the, the presentation of a sworn testimony by the proprietor, Ignis, of the hotel where the murder occurred. What is the testimony you wish to give us? The man I saw leaving, Sunri, probably left after I heard the blaster shot. The guilt of the accused is apparent even this early in the trial. 
Know your place, Sith. This is important evidence. The court will keep this in mind. Near the top of our list of pertinent facts. We will now begin by calling forth witnesses to the crime and taking their testimony. After each witness is given their testimony, you will cross-examine them. You may ask the presiding judges for their opinions on the current state of the cases. This is a special privilege given by Manon Law, only to the defendant, so use it wisely. First witness is Firith. Prosecution will question the witness first. You are Firith Me, the well-known Pazak player. I wonder Objection. if you can trust the word of a, a gambler as reliable testimony. <laughs> Phoenix. Uh, appropriate name. Objection! Yes, actually. Objection. Uh... Objection, your honors. Objection sustained. Ask the witness your questions and do it promptly. Of course, your honor. Fear <laughs> me. What did you see the night of the murder? Well, I came out into the hallway after they have the same voice. shot and saw That's Sunry weird. over there limping down the hall out of the building. <laughs> A very obvious point, your honors. The accused was seen leaving the scene of the crime after the blaster that killed Elasa was fired. Very pertinent point, prosecutor. It is now the defense's turn to cross-examine the witness. Um, so all we need to do is shed sufficient doubt. And that can be done without lying and deceiving. So let's do that. Did you actually see the murder happen? You mean, actually see him kill her with my own eyes? Well, no, but I don't think there could have been anyone else there. The point is well taken, Arbiter. Do you have additional questions? Elasa is a dark Jedi, isn't she? Yes, from what I could tell. She carried a lightsaber under that cloak of hers. Objection! That doesn't prove she was a Jedi. And all this piece of evidence is very important. It establishes the character of Elasa and perhaps her intent in dealing with Sunray. Do you have additional questions? These two are not relevant to him, like, at all. He did see him limping away. So maybe we should say this. How could Sunry have harmed her if he was a cripple? I don't know if that's a great way of saying that, but fine, let's go for it. Well, he was moving pretty fast running away, but yeah, I mean, how could he kill a Sith warrior in combat? I don't know for sure. Do not think less of Sunry because of his handicap. He is fully capable. Can't you see that the man can hardly walk, let alone fight a Lhasa? That is enough for now. We will deliberate on this later in private. Do you have additional questions? It's ya boy. Reasonable doubt. Uh, yeah, that's really all we're going to do here. So let's just push it to reasonable doubt territory. I have no additional questions. Uh, he doesn't even know about the metal, so we're not going to we're not going to do that. I have no additional questions. Really well. Would you like to use this opportunity to poll the judges? Um, yeah. Why not? I do not have enough. Okay, so not enough information. Unsure. Cannot make my decision. Do not have enough decision. Okay. Confident it will be proven. Okay. Since the defense has no further questions, we will call up the second witness, the Rodian Glupor. Prosecution may question the witness. Glupor the Rodian. You were staying in the hotel the night of the murder and saw Sonri leaving Alasa's room, didn't you? Yes, Glupor sees Sonri running down the hallway. And when Glupor look in room, Sith woman dead on floor. This is clear, then, that Sonri left the room with the Sith Elasa already dead behind him. Perhaps, Sith, it is the turn of the defense to question the witness now. Isn't the medal at the crime scene too obvious a clue? Lupor not know. Why anyone leave things in someone else's room? Lupor just think these things happen. It is just odd. Yes, odd indeed. Do you wish to ask the witness anything else? Did you plant the medal on Elasa? Lupor. Lupor. Don't do it, Lupor. Prosecution will be silent. What does it say? Wish to say, Glupor? Glupor, Glupor paid by Sith to plant that metal. Lies, slander. I object. Are you certain of this, Glupor? Glupor, certain. You wish to ask the witness anything else? No additional questions. Would you like to pull the judges at this time? 
Uh, yeah. Not enough information. Unsure whether he was the actual murderer. Can't make my decision. Uh, not enough information. Um, Compton will be proven. No more questions called out. Elora, Sunrise, one life. So, so far we have one leaning in each direction, three neutral. Okay. You, Elora, are Sunri's lawful wife. Your husband was a hero in the last war between the Sith Empire and the Republic. He was crippled in that war. Do you not believe he'd blame the Sith for his injury? Yes. I guess he would. And there you have motive. Sunri seeks revenge on the Sith for what they did to him and killed Elasa. Supposition for now, Prosecutor. This is the defense. Have any questions for the witness? Um, Phoenix says, wait a second, that witness, he sounds like he has the same voice actor as Virgil from Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. The second best RPG of all time. Gambler? I haven't played it. Give me a vague, brief, general description of what I'm missing. I'm, I'm interested. Okay, uh, let's go with the bad news first. And then we'll go to the good news. Was it true your husband was having an affair with Elasa? Yes. Yes, it was true. He was having an affair with that Sith harlot. It seems painfully obvious that he killed her to keep her quiet about the affair. Be silent. You have already questioned the witness prosecutor. He'd been seeing her for some time, I think. But he said he was going to change. He'd gone there that night to end it. We talked the night before and he'd promised. But now things have become so very complicated. No kidding. This is very enlightening evidence. It will influence our deliberation considerably. If you have any more questions, Arbiter. Um, based Glopor, such a good boy. I mean, he was talked into planning evidence, but he did come around and tell the truth. So at least that. Sunri was a Republic war hero, wasn't he? Yes. He fought against the Sith in the last war. He fought bravely, and was even awarded the Hero's Cross. I don't know how much that means to the Sith. Or dollars to on Steam, huh? Your honors. But in the Republic, it is awarded only to the bravest, most valorous, most honorable men. The kind of man who earns that medal would not kill someone in cold blood. Your husband earned a medal as he excelled at killing Sith. It relates directly. Do not let personal opinion sway your judgment on the law. Do you have any more questions, Arbiter? That might have actually hurt my case. Sunri was a cripple. Could he have killed Elasa? He was a good man, but his injuries pained him terribly. But he always held on, always persevered. I don't think he could have beaten her or anything like that. But a blaster? I, I just don't know. Sunri seems fully capable to me. It seems unlikely that he would choose to do such a thing. Do you have any more questions, Arbiter? <laughs> um, Erica says, looks like the original Baldur's Gate, Gate game, though. Which is something else I gotta replay. It's actually on my desktop right now. Probably should. I have no additional questions. Will you use this opportunity to pull the judges? Yeah, let's... Oh, he could have been the culprit. Perfectly capable of committing the crime. Evidence is weighed against Sunri. I don't have enough information to judge the case. Cannot tell yet if Sunri killed the last unconquered the life reason. Oh, that's not very good. I wish to call forth Sunri himself, your honors. Are you a war hero, Mr. Sunri? You fought in wars against the Sith Empire, correct? Yes, that's right. And I don't regret it either. The Republic needs its heroes. Indeed. Would you say that you dislike the Sith? Even hate them of course i hate them trying to take over the galaxy every chance they get killing millions of innocents pure politics were you in alasa's room on the night of the murder well yes i, I was i had been having an affair with alasa and my wife yes but i realized how wrong i had been and i was going there to end it you were having an affair with a sith you wanted to end it quickly and quietly so you killed her from behind and tried to flee no i I think we can see the answer clear enough, Mr. Sunry. Do not interrupt the accused. In fact, I think you said quite enough, Prosecutor. Do you have any questions to ask the accused arbiter? Phoenix says Arcanum is basically steampunk Fallout 1, but in an established fantasy world. The nature of magic and technology are opposed to one another, and the modernization of the fantasy world causes tension. I really like that theme. 
Um, it's really interesting to see. Uh, it was very cool in... It, it's really similar to... What was it? Um, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Planet Brio. The history of the planet Brio. Basically has that as its sort of pre-apocalypse story. It was something very much like that. It's the tension between uh, between old magic and the development of science. <clears throat> it's really cool. Really cool. Um... I'll come back to this late later. How could Alasa have gotten a hold of your medal? I don't know. The medal had gone missing some time ago. I never found out what happened to it. It's possible the Sith had stolen it and had it planted on the body. Well, yeah, we know that. Your honors. Rue, but it does have merit. It deserves consideration. Is there anything else you wish to ask the accused? Well, yeah. Like, obviously, Glueport literally admitted to it. I wish this were a little bit more interconnected, but whatever. You were going there to end the affair. Would the Sith object? Yes, I think they would. They wouldn't want to lose one of their sources, even though I didn't give them anything. They... they might have killed her for her failure. Or they might have thought she'd turn against them or something like that. The Sith Empire is not the barbaric institution you portray it to be. It really is, but okay. Your silent prosecutor is a valuable point that lends for some credence to your defense arbiter. Is there anything else you wish to ask the accused? Elasa was a Sith was a Sith spy, wasn't she? Of course she was. Why would a young, beautiful Sith woman get with an old cripple like me? We're not helping yourself, Sunray. You only give reason why you might kill her. It merely states facts. The incompetence of the murder indicates that her occupation was not the motive for the killing. The fact remains, Elasa was a Sith and likely a spy as well. Anything else you wish to ask the accused? No additional questions. I hope that didn't hurt me. You use this opportunity to pull the judges? Yeah, sure. Not enough information. Unsure. Wait against summary. Not enough information. It will be proven that it hasn't been. Okay. Uh, summary of the pertinent facts of the case. I think the facts in this case are very straightforward. This one does kind of summary sound like Fred. was having an affair with Elasa. He sought to end it. And the simplest, quickest method, giving his hatred of the Sith, was to simply kill her. Witnesses saw Sunri fleeing the scene, and material evidence places him there at the time of the murder as well. I am confident that any informed observation of the facts will lead the judges, your honors, to this very conclusion. Dude, in your closing statements, are Phoenix says, uh, Arcanum used to be my favorite RPG until Kingdom Come Deliverance came out. Sadly, the people at Troika didn't add hardcore traditional Catholicism into their setting. Yeah, that's disappointing. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to Kingdom Come Deliverance. That's next on the list for this channel, I think. Hmm. Elasa was a spy, and the Sith are framing summary. I find that highly unlikely, Arbiter. The Sith have no need for such deception. The facts be clear. But the Sith have been known for violence, deception, and murder before. If it's true. Is there another point you wish to make? No one actually witnessed the murder. Oh, that Ruth. doesn't mean a thing. He was there, running from the room. If you speak out of turn again, you will be forcibly ejected from the court. The arbiter speaks a valid fact. Another part you would like to make? Sunri was ending the affair, so the Sith killed her. The Sith would not leave the medal of her killer clutched in her hand. Your time for arguments has passed. You would do well to remember that. The arbiter's argument does bring up a valid point. Is there anything else you would like to state? I'm not going to go with the Sith or evil. Um, probably not going to go with Sunru's a cripple and couldn't have killed her. Should I? Should I bring that up again? No, they all seem to think he's perfectly capable. I'm not going to bring that up. It might 
I turn them off for me. All right, my arguments are complete. Court will now deliberate amongst ourselves. Okay. The court hereby finds Sunri guilty of the murder of the Sith Elasa. Really? According to South Catholic law, the prescribed punishment for murder is death. Sunri, no. Due to extenuating circumstances surrounding this case, and not to provoke additional tension between the Sith and Republic attendant elements within Otto City, the sentence is commuted to a life term in the Otto City prison. No, Your Honors. I demand the death penalty. You are in no position to argue, Sith. Do not think that your empire can pressure this court. We've made our decision. The verdict has been delivered, and this trial is now over. This is the will of the court, but it doesn't feel like justice to me. Move the guilty party from this courtroom. Crap! What did I screw up? Sunry. I screw up. Huh. Whoops. Well, that's unfortunate. I don't know how I screwed that up, honestly. Uh, can I go talk to him still, or no? Nope, okay. I can't talk to him anymore. That's it. It's over. Alright, uh... Could have asked for help, that is true. Want to rerun it? We have time. I have a perfectly timed low, uh, save. Alright, quick poll of those watching. Did I redo this? Yes, I should, or no, don't bother. Yeah, I think I got all the evidence I needed. Pretty sure. <clears throat> Unless there was, like, evidence from the Sith base that I'm missing? Is there evidence in the Sith base? That's actually an important question. Because if I'm missing that, then that's important. Then I want to go get, I want to go back and get it. I'm going to make a new save here. That's actually very important. If I'm missing evidence from in the Sith base, then I want to go back and get that and see how it goes and try this all over. I'll, I'll skip through a lot of the dialogue in, if, if I do. I want to draw this out too much more than I need to. Considering you tried to avoid lying, I think you did rather well. You got him off of the lighter sentence. That is true. It's true. I don't think you... I don't think he can be executed. I don't think. If I remember right. Again, just due to political pressures. And also, I will add, it does seem like, at least, it seems like to me at least, that they are working on something like a preponderance of the evidence standard, rather than, uh, rather than, um, innocent until proven guilty. Which is a dangerous retrial. Okay. Anybody? Yeah? I have another save here, so I can just go back to it if, if, uh, if not... Um, yeah, Erica, see if there's uh, more evidence in the Sith base. If there is, I need to go get that, because that's important. I thought there was, but I didn't find it when I went back. Unless it would be, like, in one of the computer terminal terminals, and I didn't do that with... That it didn't bring uh, T4 or T3 or whatever. Persuaded Ignis to tell, uh, to tell that he saw Sunry leaving before the shot went off. Okay, no, I did not do that. Um, persuaded, persuaded Ferrith May to tell you what he saw. Get Gloopor to confess the Sith, Sith planted the metal. Yes, I did that. I did those two. I didn't persuade Ignis. Because that's explicitly getting him to lie. Maybe I can. I don't know. Let, let me see, see if I can go convince him without it being like... I want you to lie to the court. Let me see. You are the one defending some. Yeah, um. Oh, you saw the night of the murder? Are you sh uh, Could it have gone off after he left? No. You could testify it happened after he left. No. No way, I'm okay. lying. 
Restricted data archives in the Republic Embassy gets Sunri to confess he was having an affair. Uh, let me keep looking over this. It, yeah, I remember this being very complicated. I did get the restricted data in the Republic Enclave, but that's the recording of him killing her. Yeah, in this case, I would basically be just paying him off to lie. What do you want to know? Well, no more questions, I guess. Paying him off the lie is also definitely going to get dark side points. That's, you know, explicitly evil. And actually evil. Lordle. That's the guy we're supposed to kill for the Jenner Herodon, but I don't want to, so. Let's switch out. Hey. Okay. West Republic system. Nothing. Darn. Yes. Find. I'm especially looking. Uh, there's a whole chart. Oh my god. Of course there is. Of course there is. I'm especially looking to see if there's anything left in the Sith base that I missed. That's where I suspect there's something, but I'm not actually sure. That's where I just came from. It is. Isn't it? No, it's not. I know we're good. Ooh. Oops. I don't need that. Firth may witness, uh, did you did you actually see the murder happen? The metal left at the scene, not a little too obvious. Oh, I was supposed to say that. Okay. I didn't say that to him. Okay, here's a Laura. Glupor. Glupor. Not Glupor. Glupor. Darn it! I did go the wrong way. Ah! Laura, was it true your husband was having an affair? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, um, but that is all of the, that's all the evidence I needed, right? Was there anything in the Sith base? That's what I need to know, because I'm, that's where I'm trying to run to right now. I could have lost a, I got a hold of your metal. I'm going to end the affair with the Sith object. Okay. Okay, that's everything. You're 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 really really sure. There was no look in the chart. It's all the witnesses. Okay, so you're sure there's nothing at the Sith base. It implied that there was. In that case, I'm gonna reload to here. You're sure there's nothing at the Sith base? I'm going to go ahead and start it. I want to begin the trial. Don't ask about being a cripple. Okay. I had a feeling that that was kind of a bad red herring. Alright, if that's it, then let's go for it. Let's begin the trial. Let's start this over. Okay. Skippity, skippity, skippity. Uh, I have no comments at this time. Ignis. He is going to be a problem here. Because I did not bribe him. I hope that's not a problem. After I heard the blaster shot. The guilt of the accused is apparent. You play Sith, cross-examine. Why couldn't I cross-examine him? Fereth, you the gambler. Are me, the well -known Objection, your honors. Of course, your honor. Fereth, well, I... <laughs> I 
Elasa is a dark Jedi, isn't she? Yes, from what I could tell. She carried a lightsaber under that cloak of hers. Objection! That doesn't prove It didn't let me cross-examine Ignis. Any other questions? Um Okay, so for refer with me. Did you actually see the murder happen? You mean actually see him? No, it's very important that she that you didn't. Was the was the metal left at the crime scene not a little too obvious? I think it may have been. I mean, you'd have to be pretty stupid to leave something that important lying around, wouldn't you? Your argument has merit. I have additional questions. All right, I'm not going to ask about the cripple thing. No additional questions. Very well. Pull the judges. Let's see how we're doing. None enough. Unsure. Now I'm making my decision. Not enough information. Can't tell. Okay. Blue port. Okay. The witnesses. Yep, 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 okay. Okay, so for Glupor, same questions. Did you see Sunri kill Elasa? Glupor, Glupor, not see Sunri really hurt Sif, but Glupor did see Sunri leaving the room with dead Sif in it. But Glupor not see him really kill Sif. An important distinction, Arbiter. Anything else? Isn't the metal at the crime scene too obvious a clue? Lupo not know. Why anyone leave things in someone else's room? Lupo just think these things happen. It's just odd. Did you plant the metal on a lost Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I definitely did. Uh, no additional questions. Pull the judges. Yeah, let's see. Could not have committed the crime. Perhaps not the killer. Can't make my decision. I uh, didn't do it. Can't tell. Okay, so I get two neutral and three in favor. The Laura time. You, Elora, are Sunri's lawful wife. Your husband was a hero in the last okay, war so... between the Sith Empire and the Republic. He was so Elasa only so you only ask Elora about the affair. Or is there anything else? Yes, I guess he would. And there you have motive. Sunry Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's true. Don't do not don't don't go there. Was it true your husband was having an affair with Elasa? Yes. Yes, it was true. He was having an affair with that Sith harlot. It seems painfully obvious that he killed her to keep her quiet about the affair. Be silent. You've already questioned the witness prosecutor. Been seeing her for some time, I think. But he said he was going to change. He'd gone there that night to end it. We talked the night before and he'd promised. But now things have become so very complicated. Yeah, this is complicated. No kidding. Uh, no further questions. All the judges? Yeah, let's see. Couldn't have done it. Not the killer. Eh? Didn't do it. Eh? Okay, so... I wish to call for right, Sunry with Sun. So we have two we have three in Sunry's favor and two neutral, sir. Yes, that's right. And I don't regret it either. Oh, this is a little bit different. It heroes. Indeed. Would you say that you was a little dislike different. the Sith? Even hate them? Of course I hate them. Trying to take over the galaxy every chance they get, killing millions of innocents? Pure politics. Were you in Alasa's room four? on the night okay. of the murder? Well, yes, I, I was. I had been having an affair with Alasa and my wife, yes. But I realized how wrong I'd been, and I was going there to end it. You were having an affair with a Sith. You wanted to end it quickly and quietly, so you killed her from behind and tried to flee. Don't mention no, she was a spy. I, oh, okay. I think we can see the answer clear enough, Mr. Sunry. That makes sense. Do not interrupt the accused. In fact, I've said enough. Heard enough, prosecutor. Um, okay, don't mention she was a spy. Okay. You were going there to end the affair. Would the Sith object? Yes, I think they would. They wouldn't want to lose one of their sources, even though I didn't give them anything. They... they might have killed her for her failure. Or they might have thought she'd turn against them or something like that. The Sith Empire is not the barbaric institution you portray it to be. It, it really is, but okay. Shut up, prosecutor. 
How could Alasa have gotten a hold of your medal? I don't know. The medal had gone missing some time ago. I never found out what happened to it. It's possible the Sith had stolen it and had it planted on the body. Supposition, Your Honors? No, it's not. Did you not listen to Gloopor? No additional questions. Uh, okay, now, the summary stuff. Is there anything I need to say or not say specifically in the summary? Uh, yeah, let's pull the judges to get this. I didn't think, I don't think he did it. Probably not. No decision. Couldn't have done it. Not sure. Okay. Okay. Summary. <clears throat> I think the facts in this case are very straightforward. Sunri was having an affair with Elasa. He sought to end it, and the simplest, quickest method, given his hatred of the Sith, was to simply kill her. Witnesses saw Sunri fleeing the scene, and material evidence places him there at the time of the murder as well. I am confident that any informed observation of the facts will lead the judges, your honors, to this very conclusion. Closing statements. Okay. Um, okay, so no one actually witnessed the murder. Oh, that doesn't mean a thing. He was there running from the room. Shut up or I'm kicking you out of here. <laughs> Don't get brazen with me. Oh, gosh. Um, not the cripple thing. Henry was having an affair, so the Sith killed her. The Sith would not leave the medal of her killer clutched in her hand. Really? The time for arguments has passed. Shut up. Let's bring up a valid point. Anything else? My arguments are complete. Now deliberate. Okay. The court hereby finds Sunri innocent of the murder of the Sith Elasa. Yay! In addition, the court finds the Sith Empire guilty of conspiracy and obstruction of justice. Your honors! No! Silence! The Sith Empire is hereby forced to subsidize a portion of Republic purchases on Manan for a period of the next solar year. The verdict has been delivered and this trial is now over. Oh, Sunri! I'm so glad! Elora! That is so much better. Me. I don't know how I can repay you. Elora and I are going to leave here and get as far away from all this as soon as we can. I and the Republic will not forget what you've done for us. Thank you. You're right. It worked. All right. Cool. Okay, so all we had to do was not mention the spying thing and not mention the, uh, the cripple thing, which all of that really does make sense. I'm going to quick save. I'm going to resave this. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, we've got 40 minutes. That is enough time to go and do those two remaining Genoharadon. Genoharadon? Assassin Guild quests. One on Tatooine and one on Kashyyyk. I think it's time to do both. Maybe not. We might have to do one. Starting off next week, we'll see. But we'll see. Let's get out of here. Uh, before we go down into the depths of Manan, we'll be doing next week. Spoopy underwater mission. Speaking of which, the Spoopy underwater mission was uh, a uh, a very significant inspiration for a quest that I made for my uh, uh, oh, geez, for my Mass Effect tabletop game a few years back. A few years back, I ran a, a Mass Effect tabletop game. I've mentioned this before on the stream. Um. Uh, Erica was a player, uh, as well as David, who's often here. Uh, that's Rally Opteril and Thomas, who, if you're listening later, hello. How's it going? Uh, you may remember this, the spooky mission, this, um, where it was, uh, it was, it was very, very much based on uh, this, this underwater mission, where uh, basically the, the the overall plot for the game was that the uh, there were these little uh, these. So, if you remember in, Ma in uh, Mass Effect 3, the Leviathan DLC, uh, there were these uh, these big old black pearls that mind control people in their proximity. Okay. Is this ringing a bell? Um, this means that uh, this was uh, from the Leviathans, the ancient eldritch evils, the, the source of the Reapers, that whole thing. 
Um, they had miniaturized their technology by the end of the war, basically, until they were about this big. They were little pearls. They were little black pearls that glowed and would, would mind control people. Um, and so they were trying to uh, trying to find these and find out where they were coming from and find out stuff about it. And so they they went to the Hanar homeworld of Kaje, which is another water world. And I I used the uh, the above water city aesthetic kind of thing. And they were they were tracing down somebody who had one of them. Uh, and they found there was a like a murder mystery thing, and it turned out that the guy who had done the killing did it while it was enthralled. And so then he, uh, as part of the mind control, threw the thing into the ocean or sank down into the depths. So part of the mission was going down the bottom of this very deep ocean to try and find this pearl, because that could be extremely dangerous at the depths of a water world. And uh, so basically they were in this undersea facility. There was some creepiness to it. There was a dream sequence involved where they were being crushed to death by the endless depths of the ocean. Um... And at some point, they uh, they managed to go out of the uh, out of this facility in their in their like, sealed hard suits until they found a uh, that there was a giant crab the size of a house that had picked this pearl up and gained gained immense biotic powers. Uh, they did a a massive boss fight with this giant super this giant enthralled super crab uh, at the bottom of the ocean, which was I really enjoyed that. That was very fun. Got something on your mind, do? You? What do you think of Sunri's verdict? Innocent. Hmm. I don't know what to make of it, to tell the truth. Do you think justice has been done? Of course. I see. I am not so sure. If he did kill that woman, Sunri's going to have to live with that on his conscience. It's and true. if he's justified her death in his mind, well, Sunri was a good man once. I only hope that is still the case. I enjoyed his company. Ugh, I don't want to talk about this anymore. My jaw aches. <laughs> ah, well, yeah, I understand. Yeah, depth charges were used. <clears throat> uh, someone made a biotic singularity that created a giant, like, super whirlpool that turned the battlefield into a spinning nightmare. That was very. Uh, it was good. It was a. It was a. It was a great quest. I really enjoyed it. How can I help? When we last talked, you needed time to think. So. You have been patient with me, haven't you? I suppose you deserve an answer, but you have to understand how difficult this is for me to say. Yes, I think so. With all my training, I should be able to control myself better than this. But you're not like anything I expected. You're not like any man I've ever met before. I find myself watching you when I don't mean to, and thinking about you when I don't want to. It isn't supposed to be like this. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, what are you trying to say, exactly? Every time I try to call on all my teachings to calm myself, they fail me. You have such power, such passion. I don't know if it's due to the bond between us, but I'm drawn to you. That starship won't fly. I'm not interested. Let's not. Yeah, Catholic Phoenix. Giant super crab kaiju battle. Yeah, pretty much. It was pretty epic, honestly. I'm very... <clears throat> I was uh, very pleased by that whole thing. It was a... Uh, it, was a it was a great, like horror interlude in an otherwise relatively lighthearted campaign which made it which made it a lot more fun uh are you interested in me or my ability to use the force the force is a part of you as is your power but that's not what attracted me to you it's more than that maybe it's the bond we share it gives us a certain intimacy if i could i would return to dantuin i need to be away from this bond of ours i need to weaken it i need to be anywhere but near you but malik must be stopped my own feelings are nothing when compared to that. Yet I know this could affect the sake of our mission if it's not resolved. I can't let that happen. Just give in to your feelings, Bastila. I know you want to. That, oh god, that sounds so dark side ish I think, I think we should have some privacy for this. Come with me. Do I need to put up the bonk screen? You're stronger than I no, am. No, okay, not yet. There's no point in telling me otherwise. You will be a great Jedi, I think. I hope. In some ways, you make me feel weak, like I'm caught up in the wake of our destiny. But at the same time, you make me feel stronger, more alive. Ooh. I feel more alive when I'm with you. I realize now these feelings are part of the bond we share. The Jedi Council surely realize this. 
They knew my loyalty to the doctrines of our order would be tested on this mission. By facing and overcoming my feelings for you, I've learned a valuable lesson about control and the dangers of emotion. This is an important step in understanding the Force. I'm sorry if this is not what you wanted to hear, but I felt that it was important you know our infatuation was nothing more than a result of our powerful bond. You're rationalizing, Bastila. You're just scared to face the truth. You're the one who can't face the truth. Malak has to be stopped. How can I do that if I let myself be blinded by my feelings for you? I'm going to stop Malak, Bastila. But I want to do it with you, my side. You, you mean it, don't you? But how can I be sure you're not making a mistake? I, I have to resist. I have to be strong for both of us. This is so archetypal. I love it. <laughs> you know I'm right, Bastila. But I don't... I mean, I can't. Malak will... <laughs> Which way, modern man? <laughs> Oh my god, what, which way do I go with this? I absolutely love both of these ridiculous answers. They're both fantastic and they both go in exactly the same direction. And I like. <laughs> oh god, Erica, you decide. What, what, which one is appropriate here? <laughs> oh god. This is so cringy. <laughs> yes, you're, you're right. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Bioware was still learning writing their romance lines. All right, they're, they were getting there. This this was, this was, remember, this was early. Think, wait a minute. Was this the first Bioware RPG that had romance in it? This is a 14-year-old fanfic? Yeah, well, yes, obviously. Obviously. Oh my god. If you don't stop me, I'm going with number one. <clears throat> um. <laughs> oh gosh. But yes, that's, uh, yes, you're right. It is very much 14 year old fanfic. But also, like I said, I think, it, I don't remember there being romance in Baldur's Gate, one or two. Might have been the first one. And then it became like that. Their games were, yeah, they were, they were, they were like fantasy adventure RPGs, but like primarily they were, they were dating simulators. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Shut up and kiss me, you babbling fool. Oh my! <laughs> I'm sorry. That is just. Oh, God. We shouldn't have done that. It was wrong. The Jedi are not allowed to fall in love. Oh, God. It didn't feel wrong to me. It was... it was a moment of weakness. When I kissed you, we shouldn't have. I'm sorry. No, I know we both wanted it, but we shouldn't have given in to our desire. <laughs> We're Jedi. We can't act like this. Not now. Not while we still have to deal with Malak. I'm... I'm sorry. I don't blame you, but it was a mistake. I have to get out of here before somebody sees us together. Run away! <laughs> oh, God, Phoenix says, The professor is a wise man. He gets his wife to pick the cringy romance line for him. As a recently married man, I feel, I, myself, I feel inspired. Yes, of course, that's 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 how this course works, naturally. Oh, God. I'm going to talk to Jolie because he has, he has stupid Jedi romance experience. See if he has something to add. Uh, never mind. Oh, I get it. Let's play with the old man's head, is it? He's half senile. He'll forget <laughs> I said anything. Oh my god. Wait, well, what was this about anyway? <laughs> Erica says, no, don't. Don't be inspired. <laughs> oh god, see anything I got to I want to talk to you about what happened between us. We've, we've already been over this. 
It was a moment of weakness, a stumble brought on by unbridled passions. But my emotions are firmly in check once more. We need to stay focused on stopping Darth Malak. And I want the others to stay focused as well. I don't want them to get suspicious and start gossiping about our little encounter. So until our mission is over, we need to act with discretion. We shouldn't speak of this anymore. Not until Malak is defeated. Uh -huh. Okay. 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 Especially with Garth standing like two feet away. <laughs> oh my god. What are some of his thoughts on this matter? You want to talk? Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal. If he's alive, th there's just nothing else I want to think about. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could, it would be a huge load off my mind. Okay, soon. Yes, we will do that because we're going to Corban after, after Minna. They faded to black for a kissing scene. Their animators were either religious extremist, based, or underfunded. Cringe. Um... I feel like more like it's they knew their limitations. Yeah, <laughs> Karth be like, yeah, he's kind of uh, yeah, he was watching this exchange and is intentionally not saying a damn thing. Uh, all right, let's go to Tatooine. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I think uh, like I said, it's <laughs> they knew the limitations of their animation, and quite honestly, it is a um, it's a level of discretion to fade to black that they did not have in a lot of places moving forward, especially, oh my god, especially um, Dragon Age Origins. I uh, I blocked those out on the stream with my bonk screen, but, but man, they were awkward. The romance scenes in Dragon Age Origins were so awkwardly animated. Oh, come on. Really? Okay, fine, whatever. Should have put the mod in to get in, these. Incoming fighters. There's a mod to skip these. Totally could have. I hate when they swoop in from below. It's ridiculous. Like they know the firing arc of these cannons. They're exploiting it. Okay, there we go. There we go. Got him. All right. Anyway. Oh yeah, naked Cullen from oh, sorry. Well, no, that's an Inquisition. That was funny. Um, I will say the romance scenes in Inquisition are not exactly uh, fade to black class eight, um, but they are at least like not embarrassingly poorly animated. Um, that's not what I can say about Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age Origins, the romance scenes are just painfully awkward. Be, like entirely because they are awkwardly animated with with way too few polygons to make the people involved look look human, um, and I, I mean I don't know, it, it's a lot of very awkwardness and they uh, they it was they were limited by the technology of their time, thank God because it was it was awkward rather than, uh, than creepy. They've gotten to the point of being kind of creepy. And in some cases, like, kind of explicitly pornographic. Which is not great. Um, who do we want? Let's bring Jahani. Yeah, Jahani on this one. Jonathan Jahani. On our, um, assassination. Okay, let's go. We might only have time for this one. Not the other one. Kashyyyk. This one in Kashyyyk is actually rather far from the spaceport, from the landing pad. Because you have to go all the way down to the Shadowlands. Yeah, I... Oh God, I'm so glad we got to that point. That uh, that scene, the naked Cullen running off screen. 
That was that was that's a delightful, uh, strangely wholesome, fun scene. Hmm. Uh, good. Yep. Let's go. I cannot believe that my force speed is just like persistent at this point. Yes. Wait, that's weird. I didn't realize that. Master speed is just a buff that you always have up. Either that or it's glitching. I don't care. I'd rather not have to recast it. Okay, whoever this guy is that we're after, he is hunting... Uh, he's hunting... The Crate Dragon. So we know where that is because we hunted the Crate Dragon. The difference is we did it successfully. Whereas this guy will have failed because we already killed him. God, unless it's back. Unless there's another one. There's another one! Oh, God! Anyway. By the forts! Yeah, there. There we go. Here's the den. Which at least appears to still be empty, hopefully. When I'm running across the Dune Sea, I keep thinking this is Kotor, or this is uh, Sotor, the MMO. Uh, the MMO has a uh, has a run lock feature, so you don't have to keep holding down W. Uh, you can just click a button on your mouse. I always had it bound to one of my side mouse buttons. One, my little thumb keys. Wait, where are you? Where's this guy? What's the deal? He's hunting Kray Dragons. Was he in the hunting lodge? Did I come out here for nothing? Yeah. What's, what's up? Rulan. No. Vorn. Gamorian and Vorn Dasrad. Expected to be on Tatooine hunting Kray Dragons. This is warning you to be careful of Warren's assault droid coming. Okay. I guess? He should be right here. Right here somewhere. Gomorian with an assault droid. Can't be that hard to miss. Anyway, like I said, I'm used to um I'm used to an auto run button. Wait, I haven't explored anything down this way. Maybe I should. Oh, no, that's it. That's that's the end. The edge of the area, complete, complete edge. Your sand people. Maybe I need to go back to the hunting lodge, and I'm stupid. That's possible. I've searched the whole area. He's not here. Definitely not. All right, fine. Let's go back. Two backs. At least I have four speed. That's helpful. <clears throat> and I will also say, at least the environments aren't as freaking massive as they are in Sotor. The Sotor environments are unbelievably huge. It's, a, it's actually really impressive just how large the environments are on a lot of the planets. Like Tatooine is... Oh my god, it's enormous. It's huge. Um, Alderaan as well. Alderaan is really big. There's a few planets that are just massive. Um, Hoth is just sprawling wasteland. Um, Alderaan is beautifully huge. It's, it's mountains. It's very mountainous. There's forests. There's different environments. It's all very well crafted. Very well and carefully crafted. Um, unlike Tatooine, which is just rolling dunes for miles. Literal miles. In-game miles. Um, spaceport. Hunting Lodge. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, we'll actually see if uh, we manage to finish this one and or the next one in the next 15 minutes. 
Because it's possible I goofed. Hey, Gamorians. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Vorn. None of these guys are Vorn. Doric Quinn. Uh, do you know of... Does this guy... Do you know of Vorn? Maza. Big fight in the dunes. You talk of the lodge. Killed a dragon. How about that? Um... Anything out of the ordinary happening? Yeah. Uh, you killing a dragon? Suppose it's the destruction of Taurus, real far away. Not surprised, like, uh, like it happened. I remember the Exarchoon War and how the Sith and Jedi fought across worlds. I don't have much interest in either group, but I act like they are above my concerns, I guess they are. I don't know anything more local. Zerka is always complaining about sand people. Sand of it. Wild animals, not people. I guess the Jawas are being pushed around again. At least that's what I think they are. I have to tell sometimes. Maybe. Anything to sell or trade? No, I, I sold those to you. I sold those to you. Uh, kudos. Um, ask about Tatooine. Um, no. Darn, where are these guys? He's supposed to be hunting a crate dragon. Dragon Zerka, I guess, or the maybe the Cantina. Eh. No. Oh man. Erica, you want to Google? <laughs> Vorn the Gamorian is who we're looking for. Yeah, I'm the party. Honey, there you are. What? We only got fifteen minutes. Oh, this is the racing thingy. This isn't. This isn't even Zerk, or this isn't even Cantina. No, okay. Ugh. Wait, wrong way. There's the cantina. Mm, uh, that was bus. I see you were bus. We're looking for this, for this guy. Born Dasrad. The Gamorian. That. That's the information for. I can't find where to find him. I looked in the uh, I looked in the cave where the Cray Dragon was, and he's nowhere near there. Uh, so unless I just happen across him here or something silly like that. I'm gonna talk to the maybe I'll ask the bartender. Bartenders know things. Huh. What's the winner of the Manon Sector Champion title doing Ooh. here, I wonder? Must have blown all your winnings. <laughs> I wanna ask about things here on Tatooine. What, did some Zerka promoter tell you to come to this planet? I pity you if you were expecting a prosperous mining outpost. Nothing here but sand here and more cool. sand. There's a little hunting and racing, but nothing that'll make a small man rich. Okay, um, uh, questions about hunting. You got a license there, don't you? Faz's lodge will be open to you now. Nothing more I can tell you about hunting than his lot won't. And since you got that license from Zerka, you know they look for bounties of their own. They're the ones with credits to pay and interest to protect. All right. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah. Guess not. Where the heck is this guy? Maybe the droid seller has information or something. Maybe he is supposed to have a droid. So he enters sand sand people territory. Really, sand people territory. Only place I didn't go. Hmm. Okay. Fine. Basically the only place on the planet that I didn't go to. Let's go to the Sand People territory. I have 13 minutes. I can do it. 
It'll probably happen. Run! At least I can run super fast. I don't need to keep recasting for speed than before. I do have to keep my finger on the W key, but yeah. Northern portion of the Sand People territory. Okay. This is the uh, Dune Sea. So this ain't it. There's raids over there, which we can eat up. But... Greetings, Sand People. Let's go. Okay. The northern portion of the Sand People territory. Uh, yeah, there is. That's where. If I go to the top of this dune, maybe I'll see him. Um, that's where you go through to. Ah! Here he is. Orn's Assault Droid. I'm here. Yes? Yes? Okay, I've disabled this droid. This must be the swoop bike of Vorn Dasrad. Uh let's leave it alone. See if we can just find the guy. Repair part. Fine. Um leave it alone for now. Let me um switch items to Thing that gives me um, increased repair. Oh, it doesn't give me repair. Crap. Oh, excuse me, never mind. Who has good repair? Why? <laughs> Not very good. Zero. Two. Oh man, that's not good. Right, fine, let's do it. Air. Program the droid to seek out and attack Vorn Dasrad. Let's do it. And then let's get out of here. We can help the droid. <clears throat> let's just have his own droid do the killing for us. Why not? Oh my god, he did it. He actually killed a great dragon. He actually did it. How? What's going on here? What are you doing with my assault droid? If you surrender now, I'll let you live. Turn my own droid against me? Very clever. But it'll take more than rogue assault droid and you to take down Vorn Dasrad. It's done. Dark side points for this. Ridiculous. Alright, whatever. Credits in a data pad. How can I help? What? Uh no. Then I suggest Never mind. Did I, did I get anything from those remains? What's this? That's it? get anything from that? I really hope I got something from that. Alright, anyway. We're back to the Ebon Hawk. And... Let's at least fly to Kashyyyk. And then I guess we'll uh, wrap for the night. Get there. Because I'm not going to have time to actually get to this guy. I don't think. In the Shadowlands. Let's 
Especially if there's another freaking attack by a bunch of starfighters. Annoys me. This is admittedly the downside of doing Manon last. Because uh, if you do Manon earlier on, you can just do these missions on your way through. Uh, then again, they're harder. <laughs> because as it stands, we we are very high level. We're extraordinarily leveled up. Alright. Go. moon too and you can also obviously tell that endor was supposed to be kashik from the from the, the art design of this like endor in episode six was originally supposed to be kashik it was supposed to be the wookiee homeworld but um uh, i think it was mostly uh for the sake of marketing so you could market the cute little ewoks that he changed it really disappointing anyway all right uh let's save um there we go Let's save really quick, and uh, I think I'm going to call it a night. I think um, this is a good place for us to cut out now, start with next time, finish this little hunt, go back to Manon, go down into the depths of Manon, finish that up, and then head out from there. So I think that's all we have left, more or less, uh, before it's time to finish up Manon and then move on to Korriban, uh, with some things in between, obviously. So, that's all I've got for tonight. So, thank you all once more for joining me. Um... I hope to see you again on Thursday for more Dragon Age Inquisition, and then once again on Monday as well, um, right back here, as we can continue playing and discussing uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Like I said, thank you all again, uh, and I hope to see you all next time. Good night.